Hey guys, I'm so sorry. Um, of course, the minute that I'm ready to go live, one of the dogs wants to go out. So <laughs> that's just the way it goes. So I just hit the intro and well, I said, let me hit the intro. That'll give me a minute so I can go and, and I got a 17 year old dog. So she's very fussy. Anyway, guys, I hope that you're having a good evening. I'm not going to keep y'all long. Um, I'm so glad to see all of y'all here. Thank you so much for coming through. Um, I had a very busy day. I was gone all day long. <laughs> and I was going to come around like 8 o'clock. And I was like, you know what? I got home at 7.15. I left to go out today. Um, I had to do something for family. And um, I think I left at 12.45. And I got home at 745. And that was also after um, picking up Sam's, you know, like a whole Sam's run. And my whole entire trunk was full. So got home. I think my, my husband came home like 15 minutes later, got everything out, unpacked groceries, everything. So anyway, I'm here with y'all. Um, I figured, um, I didn't know what you guys wanted to talk about. I did watch the video from yesterday from phone calls. Um, it was interesting. And earlier today, when I had some time after the live that I did on Love Lies and Lace Fronts, I actually did kind of react to that video already. Um, there's like two or three parts where I have to edit because I was having some computer problems. So I am going to, I want to put that out tonight, but it might be too late. So I might, well, I don't want to say too late to put it out, but too late for me to put it up. But that may or may not be true. It just depends on how long we stay here. But if we are kind of, let me change this. If we are, um, if we don't have a whole lot to talk about tonight, then I might take a few minutes and finish editing that, which I'm not going to do like a real, like edit and all, like I'm going to, I just need to take out a couple of parts where 
I think I was on mute, you know, things like that. Nothing like I'm editing like I would have done like a one of my edited type videos. Um, hey, everyone. Hey, Edna. Let me say hi to all of you guys. Give me just a minute. You guys say hello to each other and give me just a second. Let me let my the last dog in and lock up and I will be right back. So give me just another second. Um, what else can I... You guys might not want to intro. It's late. So you guys just want to talk to each other. Okay. Um, give me about a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, y'all. What are we talking about tonight? Let's see. Um, you want me to drop the? I'm gonna drop the call in and see what you guys are talking about. Um, I know there's been a ton of comments. I, um, I mean, I'm a little behind on reading comments. It is a silent, or is it just on my end? No. Um, <laughs> if you would have hit the bar back, you would have known that I put you guys on hold for just a second. Um, cause I had to handle some business in the house. So yeah, no, you're good. Um, it was silent for just a second. See, that's why sometimes I'll roll something while I am out of pocket for a minute. Uh, just because I think it makes it easier because obviously you guys, like, even though this is a chat room, you guys aren't like all in a room. Okay, guys. Um, let's do a little bit of open, not so much open mic, but um, do you guys have any questions tonight? Go ahead. And if you'd like to call in, let's try to limit it to like about three to five minutes because I, for me, it works better if I have just one person up at a time, that way you can kind of give your thought and opinion and we can talk about it and then, um, let the next person come up. So if you guys have anything you'd like to talk about, let's go ahead. Also something interesting, um, a bougie gang, uh, sis, sent me a email with uh, some information about uh, one of the basketball wives just got sentenced to, is it four years? Uh, hold on one second. Let me see. I just got a very long letter from somebody. Um All right, let me, okay, let me focus because when I open this email, it's always something. Number one, the person who came to the chat yesterday and said they knew Ernesto, um, I don't know if that person has messaged me or not. As of yesterday, I was looking in my email. I did not see anything from someone like the Antidote show. So I don't know if the Antidote, uh, show is in the mist, but I don't know that sis ever messaged me. Um, so just to follow up on that, you guys, um, so you know that the person who came to the chat yesterday and said that they knew Ernesto, um, they were supposed to reach back out to me and did not. So, um, let me see what it says over here. They had a write up in people magazine. Um, let me see. 
Is this old or is this new? Okay, I guess this is the new one. Uh, I was just trying to find more information about it, but let's talk about this because it was some scamming going on, some 15 different fraudulent related felonies. I thought this was interesting. Um, this is unfortunate, right? Let's see. British, I guess her name is, is it Sharia Williams? Wow. Last name Williams. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Um, okay. Let me drop my banner, but she's already been convicted, I guess. Um, Reality Star was charged with 15 different fraud related felonies. British Williams was sentenced to four years in prison for her invol involvement with tax fraud, bank fraud, insurance fraud, and pandemic related scams. Guys, PPP, all that stuff, they are prosecuting those. It might take a minute because it's been a minute since the pandemic, but trust me. If people got fraudulent loans out here and your T's are not crossed and I's are not dotted and people are dropping dimes on you, you're going to get it. Okay. <laughs> Wait, hold on a second. Let me fix something. Um, Because I don't know what's on my screen. So let me, let me take off anything that doesn't need to be here. Okay. Just a minute. Okay. Okay. Um, the former basketball wife star pleaded guilty to 15 felonies. She was probably like, you know what? It's not even worth it. I'm not, I'm not going there with y'all. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and plead guilty. Um, the former basketball wife star pled guilty to 15 felonies, including five counts of misuse of a social security number four counts of bank fraud, three counts of making false statements to the IRS, and three counts of wire fraud, the U.S. Attorney's Office, Eastern Division of Missouri, said in a statement. Let's go see what the statement says. Um, form we'll get back to people in a second. All right, we'll finish this, and then we'll go over to the other one. Um, British Williams was punished today, not for fraud, um, but her celebrity, Williams attorney Bo Brindley, tells People the court chose to treat her more harshly due to her status as a public figure rather than treating her similarly, um, similarly situated defendants equally. Ms. Williams' success is not a crime subject to, subject to enhanced penalty, and we will challenge this sentence through every legal means available. In addition to the four-year prison sentence, Williams, 33, will be on supervised release for five years after her release on, from prison in order to pay $564,069 in restitution. Wow. Today's decision follows Brindley's suggestion of a 18-month sentence and the pre-sentence investigation suggestion of a 63 month prison sentence, you know what? So, I mean, gosh, so four years is what 48 months. So, I mean, she did get less, you know what we're doing. You knew it was wrong and you did it anyway. The U S district judge, Henry, uh, Autry told Williams during the sentencing, you knew what you were doing. You knew it was wrong and you did it anyway. Okay. Not only are you out there for people to watch your entertainment, but also for people to watch you. That's a big obligation, Audrey said to Riverfront News. In Williams' plea agreement, she admitted to underreporting her income to tax returns for 2017 through 2019, as well as falsely claiming a niece and nephew as dependents, which as a result enabled her to avoid $29,000, $29,366 in taxes. The reality TV star, star also fraudulently used social securities numbers not assigned to her to open accounts with credit card companies and banks. The U.S. Attorney's Office said 
Williams did not pay the accounts that were opened resulting. So not only did you use people's information to open accounts, so you, you opened them. Well, she appears to have opened them to run them up and then not even pay them. Williams did not pay the accounts that she opened resulting in various victims losing 28,000. So messing up people's credit, ha having them have to deal with, you know, all of that drama. That's awful. The stolen social security numbers were not that it would have been better for her to pay them. It would have been better for her to just use her own credit. Right. Um, but she intended to buy things and never pay for them. Obviously the stolen social security numbers were also used to commit bank fraud after Williams deposited checks, withdrew money from the victims. Prosecutor said this caused the additional $23,850 in losses. Basketball wife star also, she must be down bad. Wow. Um, she must be down bad because how is she doing all of this stuff? And she's, and I guess she's obviously not on basketball wives anymore and clearly um, not making any money. The basketball wife star also submitted nine applications for economic injury disaster loans, which were intended to help struggling businesses during COVID-19 pandemic. Williams falsified her business income, payroll and criminal history Wow. Um, this resulted in $144,400 from the loans, which she then used to fund a lavish lifestyle per her plea agreement. Williams received $52,647 from four paycheck protection program loans, which are used for small businesses seeking funds to cover up to eight weeks of payroll cut of payroll costs, including benefits. Williams also indicated that in 2021, it's like, damn, sis. It Williams also indicated that in 2021, and since then, she applied for the California COVID rent relief program. She falsely claimed that she was a California resident with a total annual household income of $50,000. And due to the pandemic, she could not pay her rent to the reduction of, due to the reduction of hours of work. Prosecutor says she received $27,801. Since her two, since her 2021 indictment, Williams had not filed annual taxes and listed herself as exempt on a form with her former radio station employer, which resulted in no taxes being held on $90,000 salary, according to prosecutors. They are in her ass. Okay. Additionally, she submitted fake medical bills at least <laughs> at least one insurance company leading lending to her, her co-conspirators, or both receiving $139,479.92. Someone said, dang, British. <laughs> hey Taylor. Hey Boo Boo, how are you? Um, wow. Okay. All right, let's go over here. This is on the United States uh, Attorney's Office, Eastern Division, Missouri. This was on Tuesday. St. Louis, uh, U.S. Uh, District, District Judge Henry E. Autry on Tuesday sentenced former Basketball Wives reality show cast member and St. Louis, Missouri area radio personality to four years in prison for committing $564,000 worth of fraud, including tax fraud, bank fraud, insurance fraud, and three separate pandemic schemes. British uh, pled guilty in May to 15 felonies, five counts of misuse of a social security number, four counts of bank fraud, three counts of false statements to IRS, and three counts of wire assistant US. Okay, so I think this is pretty much what we just read. Um, this sentence demonstrates our commitment. So I skipped a little bit. Um, this sentence demonstrates our commitment to hold accountable those who intentionally misuse social security numbers for their own personal gain, um, says Gail Innes, an inspector general for the Social Security Administration. Ms. Williams' criminal actions brought financial harm upon individuals, businesses, and government programs, damages the integrity of the social security number. 
Um, I think the FBI and the IRS CI for their investigation, the investigative efforts, and thank the U.S. Attorney's Office and Special Assistant to the United States Attorney, Diane, is it Cloak, um, for prosecuting this case. In her plea agreement, Williams admitted under reporting her tax returns in 2017, 2019, and falsely claiming a niece and nephew. I'm skipping. She fraudulently used a, a social security number not assigned to her to open accounts for credit cards, um, for credit card companies and banks. When when she failed to pay the accounts, the victim companies lost $28,000, $537. Um, I read most of this already. Um, finally, Okay, so yeah, basically people basically people took this press release and just they basically took this and put it in People magazine. So this is from the uh, United States United States Attorney's Office, Eastern Division, Missouri. Um, do they have the original complaint here? Um, hmm. No. Okay, so that was what was going on with basketball wives. That was one thing. I mean, my God, really? This scamming stuff, like people are out here doing weird stuff, thinking that they're not going to get caught. Um. Okay, let me see what you guys are saying. It's... Um, It's look, everybody's going down. If you've everyone's going down. Um credit repair, all the things. Um, people are so greedy. I mean, if she had money coming in left and right from so many different places. From what that sound like to me, I could be wrong, but just in in my head tallying up some of these numbers, it's a million dollars. If it's not a million dollars, it's close to it. Um, I mean, she's got to pay $564,000 in restitution, but it just seems like she was out here doing doing the most. She was doing a lot. So um, let's see. Someone said, dang British. Um, and she went ahead and just pled guilty. Taylor, I see you, boo-boo. Um, okay. Um, we know I, I'm not even up to date on what's going on with envy. Cause I've been out of the loop for a couple of days. I did put my notifications on to see what's going on with Tony, the closer, like when he goes live and stuff, girl, Tony, the closer, when you watch him, um, he's so busy cussing people out. It's ridiculous. So I'm gonna have to catch him. Like when he's more edited, like after he finishes cussing people out and maybe he posts something because, when he's sitting up there responding to the comments and cussing out people in the comments, um, I'm just waiting for him to speak on, you know, what he speaks on as far as like scams and all the stuff with Caesar and Envy and everything. Um, I, I'm following on Instagram, so I'll I'll have an update on that whenever he really drops something that's interesting. Um, but I'm I'm staying in tune to that. Um, I think let me get back to what I was talking about with um, the video from last night. I did react to it already. Um, I just need to edit out a couple little parts because I was having some issues. So I just want to kind of clean it up a little bit. Uh, but I'm going to run it through as a live. Um, I might do it tonight, but it's already 11 o'clock. So uh, when I get up early, you know, when I get up tomorrow morning, I might do that and run that first thing in the morning. And then we can come over here and talk about it because I don't, if I run that first thing in the morning on Love, Lies, and Lace Fronts, then we'll talk about it. Um, I did drop the link. Uh, let me see. I didn't pin it though. Okay. Let me drop it now. Um, guys, so just know, let's go ahead. I'm going to, so whoever decides to call in, um, let's just try to keep it to like, you know, five minutes or so. If people are, if there's no one lined up and you've got some things to talk about, then we'll talk about it. 
Um, but as more people call in, if that happens to be the case, um, then let's just, I'll let you know that when there's someone lined up. Um, yeah, I dropped it at 1042. So let me, I'm going to pin this comment. And that way, if you decide that you've got something to say, call in. Okay. Um, let's see. I got you. See what, see, I keep wanting to say see whims. I'm assuming it's Williams. Okay. I dropped it and I pinned it. So you're good. Um, so yeah, was that, were you guys surprised to hear that about British or had you heard that previously that something was going down with her? It's unfortunate when people look, I mean, and they said she also lied about her criminal background. So she must've had some stuff going on previously that, you know, I think for a lot of people, the PPP was kind of a carrot stick or something and gave some people, you know, the opportunity that if you want to go ahead and, and, and do yourself in that you could just go ahead and do that. Yeah. I didn't know. I was kind of surprised. So thank you uh, to the sis. I think I messaged you back to say, thank you for sending that to me, but um, we can get deeper into it. I can see if I can find the actual complaint so we can hear what actually went down um, cause the full narrative is always so much more fun than just kind of the high level. They pled guilty to 15 counts. Okay. What, what, what did you do and how can you like, I want to see the timeline. <laughs> like who's social, maybe they're not going to tell us who, but was it a friend? Was it, you know, she also claimed a niece and nephew, which maybe she was in cahoots with a family member. Um, she just seemed to be running a lot of scams that we've heard people do because how many people know a, fa a family member who is claiming somebody that they probably shouldn't be? I mean, that's, that's up there with buying someone's food stamps, right? <laughs> um. I don't think until people started getting busted for money laundering on TikTok did people start saying, no, I don't do that. I would, ne no way. <laughs> and don't talk about it on my live stream, right? Um, but yeah, people are, people are getting busted for that these days. And um, people have to be more careful about what they talk about because some things quietly have been, um, you know, in certain communities as acceptable and it's not. Hello. Hey, Fran. Good Hi, evening. How are you? Thank you for calling in. Thank you guys for being my win my Thursday night date. <laughs> okay, absolutely. It's a Thursday. If it's a Thursday, it's a call in. Great. So what's well, going on? Thursday, Wednesday. What day is it? We're gonna do a call in tomorrow too, because I'm gonna just tell you guys. I am. I was today. I was. I drove more today than I've driven in a long time. And sis was tired. <laughs> so I didn't get to get as prepared. I don't have my list of topics and everything. So I'm going to make it up to y'all tomorrow at lunchtime. And we'll do like a nice full catch up. I just need like 30 minutes to process like a list of topics to, you know, as far as Nesto and whatever else is going on um, that we talk about. So tonight I'm just kind of open the floor. You guys call in and talk about whatever you want. Well, Speak of the devil, no pun intended. <laughs> I did want to um, talk about Nesto. <laughs> Absolutely, that's um, and that, that's the tea right uh, now. That's what everybody's enjoying. Well, the latest thing was it's and the thing about these phone calls is that we have to remember to chronolog keep them, process them chronologically. Mm -hmm. I think you know there's an ebb and flow to it. And Absolutely, because you can get confused very quickly absolutely. if you're not keeping up with what's up. going on. And I, you know, they're like my girlfriend listens, and she just she she just you know her thing is, I mean, she's not really like invested like we are, but her thing mm -hmm. is it's all juicy, so it doesn't matter. But as I was trying to explain to her, you have no, you got to listen to it in order to because because it paints a picture, mm -hmm. uh, really a story here. But anyway, I'm saying that to say. The phone call from yesterday. Yes. Um, 
I think that was one of the few times that she seemed genuinely just 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 disgusted by him. I don't hear that often when he was um you know sounding like he was happy that he was on the news and and I mean well, I could tell he was really giddy about it, but he wasn't he wasn't like he doesn't see her. You know what I mean? It's, mm-hmm. it's I know if you've ever been in a relationship where it's like you okay, this person doesn't see me. He doesn't see Shirley. And so it didn't it didn't dawn on him that her concern was that it was basically out in the, you know, in the in the in the world. Right. Feeling embarrassed. And I could just tell she was really outdone. And I almost think she may have been ready to say something about it. But she was, I think she was just too outdone at the fact that he's sitting there squirming and he's literally giddy and happy, like he's, you know, Al Capone or somebody. And in fact, I think that's the phone call where the phone hung up, uh, allegedly, because I think she hung up on him. Right. Um, so not the call from yesterday from phone calls from prison, but yesterday when we reacted to the call from the day before yeah. yesterday. And there was the first call where it was a very, it wasn't like super short, but it was, um, they were basically talking about the news coverage and he said something. And of course it made no sense. The universal TV. And she was like, yeah, I saw it online. He said, no, it's on channel five. And she's like, you're kidding me. Yeah. Yeah. She was freaked out and he was, he was giddy and she was just, mortified and it's like he wasn't getting it and i didn't really get the sense that he ever acknowledged that what her what her issue was with it he you know he was just really he was talking about himself and that's what i mean when i say he doesn't see her because i at no point in that phone call did i get the idea that or hear him say or even acknowledge that he was aware of how how it was affecting her and how she was processing the fact that it was on the news you know, because her thing was, oh, no, now everybody's going to, you know, find out. But he was just just, just kind of sitting there like, you know, like a kid in a candy store, just excited that he was, you know, on on, on, the, on the news. And he just, I mean, literally, he, he just, I just, he just, it's like, this man does not see her. He, everything around her for him is about, is self-centered. So she's, you know, when he looks at her and I don't, when I say see her, obviously, I don't mean literally. But I mean, you know, her her energy, her spirit. You no, know, I, I you, understand what you mean. And I, and I, and I know you do. Um, you know what I mean? And that's when you know some man is into you. And so <laughs> let's say also, let's just say he he doesn't respect her. Not at all. So, and not even so much respect her as a woman, but just respect like her job. Like, and right. I think, I think the, I hate to always, you know, that poor pandemic, which it's not poor pandemic, but the pandemic did, the pandemic relaxed a lot of things for a lot of us. Right. So Mm -hmm. I think the Steve Harvey show, they might've been filming from home every now and again, especially when Steve was on vacation and out of the country. But I think oftentimes they were in the same city. Um, The heart of the crew would meet up at a radio station, whether they were in Chicago or New York or LA, they would find space and they would link up Mm -hmm. And they would um, do the show. Steve may or may not have been in the studio because he's got 50 jobs. And um, he was calling it in more than they were, which when we see Ernesto proposing, she was at work. They were at a dedicated studio space, but Mm -hmm. they don't work for the radio station. They have their own show and it's packaged and it's sold to radio stations. So I think, so I'm saying all that to say, I think during the pandemic and since they've been married, um, Carla lives in Houston and I don't know where Tommy lives, but she's in Atlanta. Everyone is somewhere else. And I think that he kind of maybe lost sight of her job. And I don't think that he even like has a regard. He has a lack of regard for you are dealing. This woman is a professional well-known broadcaster, even though everyone doesn't do the Steve Harvey show, she is known in her industry. She's uh-huh. been in her industry for 40 years. Her voice is so distinctive. Right. And I just don't think that he has a regard for the professional that she is. However, that being said, 
she needed to have that for herself because you knew what type of man or she had an inkling of what type of man she was dealing with and you decided to deal with him in a way that he compromised your paycheck. He's con and, and maybe not because some people, she just signed for five million. Well, look, contracts can be made to be broken. She's still embarrassed. This has still put an asterisk on her career. She's clearly not happy. This is a mess. So I, I do, I wholeheartedly, um, you know, second that uh, opinion that you have regarding him not seeing her. I think from a professional standpoint, he's not a professional. And for all of us who work hard for a reputation and to get someplace at your job, for your personal life to interfere with that, that's crushing. Yeah. Because it's not even your work anymore. It's just you fucked up. You either opened the door and allowed someone in and it now infiltrated the job. Um, yeah. And you know what I mean? And that well, can and really hurt you. Way, that can really hurt you professionally. What you do is who you are. I mm -hmm. mean, you know what I mean? You have jobs where literally what you do is who you are. And so you can't separate from your profession. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's one. Of, she's in one of those situations. Um but I just wanted to just, I mean, t touch base with you about, about, because I, I said, I know Fran will get it when I'm saying this man does not see her. And the I, no, I agree with you. And different about her job is that's the very reason that he's with her or, or he was attracted right. to her is because of the job. But, you know, familiarity breeds content, as they say. And so he probably just got used to it. And I'm thinking to myself, why are you biting the hand that feeds you literally? Because I would think you would be concerned and wouldn't want any smoke to come to her job because she's the one that's paying your commissary and your attorney and everything. But, but right. it's like, he's so dumb. He, he doesn't connect the damn dots. You know what I mean? He's sitting right. there talking, but then again, it goes back to the fact that he's so self-absorbed that he can't even see how he's sabotaging himself because well, he was giddy. Like, he was really happy. No, let me, let me, I'm, I'm going to keep it short. Go I know ahead. No, I, no, I mean, no one else has called in yet. So, um, I mean, you're good. Keep you going. Remember the phone mm -hmm. call? It's one of the, it's one of the later ones. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of skipped because I haven't heard anything in January. I think I heard one for maybe April or March, but in this particular one, I think his son or one of his friends was saying to him, you, oh, you know, old girl call old girl in California. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is, is he talking about Sonia contacting Shirley? And let me tell you why I thought that. I don't know, but I thought that's what it meant. Because after that phone call, the next phone call I heard, which was one of the one of the few, if not only later ones, Shirley was very... Remember when he was trying to reach Shirley and he called the son and was like, I'm trying to get Shirley and she won't pick up. But that's, that's actually in May. Okay. So right. yeah, like you said, to your point about the timeline, like... That was in Jan. Well, I can't remember the old girl. Well, old girl called old girl told her. It was 2023. That no, was. I get it. But what I'm saying is in terms of like the sequence of the actual playing, because keep in mind. So when phone calls from prison got all of these calls, like there's literally like as far as entries are concerned, there could be 600 entries of just calls made. Oh, yeah. It yeah. doesn't mean that that's all a phone call. Okay. Yeah. There could be calls made where no one picked up, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So as they've had to listen to the calls to figure out, okay, this is a good one to go with this one, or, oh, that call might go good with this call or that oh, call, okay. rather than just playing the series of calls. Uh -huh. um, also, they've had to get to know these people too. They didn't know these people. You know what I mean? Yeah, I so see, yeah. early yeah. on, yeah. they didn't know any of these people. Right, like right. We, they know them just as well as we do right, and still yeah. do. I mean, they've listened to more calls than we have, but so to your point regarding, um, I think it was Lamont, mm -hmm. um, who said that now we, I've talked to, I, we've talked about that like once a week here. I'm surprised you hadn't heard me mention that. Um, cause I'm still asking who is old girl. We did a poll on that last week. Okay. Who was old girl? Was it okay. Sonia? Was it Shirley? Was it Dominique? Was it Erica? Was it so? And who was old girl in California? Is okay, that okay, Keisha? Okay. okay. I see. I thought old girl in California was Shirley because you know she's 
kind of back and forth. But remember his crimes, a lot of them were in California and Georgia because she had that place there before. So she's back and forth. But but this is why I think it's, this is what I think happened. I'm gonna give you my brief scenario and then I'll, I'll, I'll move on. I'll let you talk to someone else. I think that Sonia started getting sick of him because remember the call when she was just blatantly disrespectful and over talking mm-hmm. him and, mm-hmm. you know, like she had, you know, when she was started singing and so, it was, I think it was around that time or before or either immediately after that she contacted Shirley. Because, of course, remember, Sonia knows about Shirley. Shirley doesn't know about Sonia. Right. So I think that Sonia contacted Shirley and basically told her everything, which is what made Sonia, I mean, Sonia, Shirley probably come out and, you know, based on embarrassment and say that she filed for a divorce. Um, which that's still questionable. Yeah, but that's, look, but that's, so you're saying, like, according to the timeline, you're, like, laying out. Let's say that call was in January, right? Mm -hmm. Because I can't remember. I have to go back to the original call to see when it said that call was. Um, Which call? Keep in mind, okay, so old girl called old girl, told her everything, whenever that was. Let's say that was, go ahead, say what? that was a May call. That was one of the. the oh, okay. And you're her. saying the January was surely talking about something else. Okay. So let's forget yeah. about that. So yeah. old girl called old girl and told her everything. So if that happened in May, mm-hmm. just think about it. In June, she wrote the affidavit. Well, did she, it was dated for June or did she write it in June? The it was un, it was signed by a notary on a certain date. It was signed and sealed on a date. And it was submitted to the court on June 26. So it was signed and it was signed into a notary on June 24th. So if the notary signed it, initialed it and stamped it, we know that it was on that date. So I have a question and, and I'm asking so really because I don't know that much about how this works. What remember now, he, we were all we <laughs> she was under the impression that he was getting a bond much earlier than he did. So could that not have been the initial letter that was submitted for to the judge? The affidavit is signed on June 24th. Right. I, I don't know. Like we can only go with what we have right. as facts. Right. We can make up anything, but right. I'm just saying as far as documents, yeah. um, a notary, a notary is a person who is authorized by the state to sign legal documents mm-hmm. and is given like a certain authority to say, you know, um, you know, that this is a true and valid document. They right. witnessed it. The folks that say that they were here were here, da, 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 all the things. So if it is notarized and signed on a date, that is the date that it should have happened or that person is risking losing their notary um, because that is, they they sign mortgages, documents, any kind of legal, um, yeah. right. legal paperwork. Right. So... Um, if it says the 24th, then that's what it should have been. Um, does, that, does that mean that's when Shirley penned it? That's what I meant. I mean, a document could have been written whenever, but it was notarized and signed yes. by Shirley. So it wouldn't have been signed until. So let's just say, I don't know if you're asking me, like, could she have signed it? And then the lawyer got it notarized on a date. That's what I'm. Yes. The notary that's, that's has I'm to saying. have the individual. So if you sign a doc, say you update your will. And you're and you're updating it on whenever you go to your lawyer's office in May, and okay. then you finalize it. It's finalized. It's signed and um, uh, executed, as they call it. Mm-hmm. Then it's stamped and notarized. It's signed and stamped and notarized that day. So it could have been yeah. written in Timbuktu ten years ago, but yeah. when it was signed and admitted to the court was on June 24th, 2023. Okay. Okay. So she would have had to be in company for it because the notary is not going to sign something that was signed not in his his or her presence because what's the point? Because it could have been signed by Boo Boo the Clown. Now, remember that letter, was, that was read when they were showing the, the trial on, uh, on TV, when they were showing the, uh, not the trial, the, um, remember when he came with the mask on and everything? Not this recent one, but when they were remember Judge when, Alex, Judge Alex, when yes. um uh uh Lewis was there, the the bumbling attorney, the black guy. Yes, yes. So mm-hmm. they read that statement. That was and during that, 
So yeah, I that was June 26. Oh, okay, then bingo, that's it. Well, e either way, I think that if you look at the timeline, you know, because remember when the guy said, okay, well, I think old girl, you know, old girl called old girl and, Holly and, and told everything. Nesto didn't want to talk about it. He glossed right over. He First of all, he didn't just do that stupid ass laugh. He just no, he got serious right over it. And so I just thought, okay, Sonia seems like the kind of person that would call the wife. Okay. Cause she's just, she's just a mess. So I believe that she probably did call Shirley and tell Shirley everything. I think that, and then that's that, that's the call where it said you have 21 cents left. Remember on mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah. Okay. And so it was like, nobody was messing with him. He had 21 cents left. The, the guy told us that old girl called old girl in, in California, whoever that is. Shirley said she had filed for a divorce in what September. Was that? Uh, September. That was, September. Literally talking a couple months away. And honestly, I, if she filed for a divorce, I think it was only after she knew that these tapes were public. It probably wasn't even because of, you know, so anything Sonia said. But I, and I think the $5 million is Steve's way of just supporting her and just trying to show, you know, that he's standing by her and he's Steve Harvey. So make himself look good in the, in the, in the process. I mean, it's just coming out of his budget. It's not coming out of his pocket. Yeah. You know, the Steve Harvey show is not Steve Harvey's personal bank account. So yeah. I think that that's cut, coming out of his budget. Who wants to fire a woman in her, um, at, in her stage of her career mm -hmm. and look like the bad guy? Even if he is quite annoyed at all of the pillow talking that she does about he and his wife um, with her husband, even though she did not intend for, for this to be happening, like us talking about this is not her fault. However, um, he would have looked worse he would look worse letting her go. Yes. Um, and also she's been quite vocal, especially in that interview that she did, even though it wasn't highly publicized. Um, she's been vocal in uh, a couple of different things that I've seen about women in uh, broadcasting, not being paid um, their oh, fair share. Okay. And she said that in that interview with Jean Sparrow okay. um, about women not being paid fairly. And, um, I think that was, I looked at the itinerary of a women in broadcasting event that she did and they were talking about the disparity in pay, um, men versus women and the different roles and all of the things. And I think that Steve has to be serious here. This guy is damn near a billionaire at this moment. Mm -hmm. Um, he's got all of these TV shows. He owns his show he makes a lot of money. And if that woman wasn't already making a million dollars, I mean, he really, you know, she's like, we've all said million, you know, many times Robin quivers, that woman makes millions of dollars a year working with Howard Stern and maybe, or maybe not. I don't know if his, his show does as well as the Howard Stern show, but if it does shame on you, if he was only paying her half a million dollars, that's yeah. like, that's, you know, uh, he's a very highly compensated man mm -hmm. and he should be paying his whole team well. That show does very well. It is one of the highest rated shows on iHeartRadio. I was looking through some of the stats on iHeartRadio talking about when they did re-sign Steve Harvey. He is in the top five of their broadcasting of their whole lineup and he makes them a lot of money. And he makes a lot of money. His budget should be pretty robust and he should be able to pay his talent appropriately. Yeah. And the fact that it got out what she was making, he should be embarrassed. Well, he I should know, be embarrassed. It may have more to do with him than it had to do with her. It's more for him to save face when he's over here in damn Versailles living like a king and you got this lady over here living yeah. in back bedrooms because she's skimping because of her 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 well, shenanigans. I'm, I'm sure Nesto is really is pissed that he messed up the bag when he's when he hears through the grapevine about her uh about her because I would right. she was making that already really I was surprised to learn what she made um you know just all things considered but yeah I, I think he's gonna be really sick when he hears about her raise because he's not he's not getting out. 
So right, he's not getting out, but she's not too far away. That was her in the courtroom. I know it was. Um, and I she's not to too far away. She's my text Shirley, but I she don't have a lot of makeup on. You know, she's probably trying to just lay low. She doesn't want to speak. But I knew that I, I knew that was her. I knew that was her. She got that little, she had that little coat on. Mm -hmm. She had her little short, short crop bang. Mm -hmm. That was her. That was her. Um, I mean, I can say 99%, and I'm only saying 99% because I wasn't there. So okay. I can't, I can't say, but I'm I'm very <laughs> much of the eagle eye variety. And I you. I did really study that picture and I yeah, um I, I was looking and I was like mm, that's her. So here's my question. If that really was her which I believe wholeheartedly it, it, it is it was her as well. What do you think she was doing there if she's told the world that she's filed for a divorce because she couldn't I mean did she want to be there to see him sentenced or 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 you know like what would be well, her, the what what's her incentive for going? I think she is, look, she, she might really be in, she's in love with this dude. I don't know that she still feels the same way she did a year ago. Um, she might feel quite foolish. She might have put herself in a bubble and is in denial because keep in yeah. mind, I don't know if people really understand like at the radio, forget about the radio station, her relationship with Steve Harvey, he is her boss. Now, they've worked together for a long time, and they may have somewhat of a personal relationship, but at the end of the day, he has to be very careful. He can't talk to her and make personal stipulations of, like, quid pro quo to her that you need to do this or you need to go confront that. He can't tell her what to do. That is a business arrangement. That would be that would be a tantamount to even a little bit of, um, you know, uh, workplace harassment he can't do anything like he can't tell her what to do in her marriage he can't tell her what to do to earn a contract mm -hmm. that's quid pro quo either you're hiring her you're contracting with her or you're not you can't make someone go do something in their per in your personal life to um to qualify for a, a new contract you know what i mean so he can't do that so i think that she was there because that's where she wanted to be either she's there because she's maybe trying to reconcile breaking it off or she is there because she, you know, like she said to Jean Sparrow, where is your faith? So maybe she's trying to be faithful. Maybe she's trying to stick by him. Maybe she's trying to validate some of this information and, and, and sit there and stick there. Um, it's look, even the wife of the Long Island serial killer, um, would it sound like to me, she, she filed for divorce from him right away, but mm -hmm. it didn't sound like she filed for divorce because he's accused of killing people. She also, and I'm not saying that that's not the reason, but what I'm saying, what I heard, um, in what was, uh, what the commentators were saying was that she wanted to be able to protect herself because she's got, you know, an adult, you know, severely autistic son Mm -hmm. Um, she has a household and very little of her own money and there could be victims who might want to sue her. And she wanted to distance, she wants to financially separate herself from him because after almost 30 years, she has no husband and she has two kids she needs to support and she needs to protect her assets. Now, whether she is shocked and appalled by what he's done, I'm sure she, she is, but primarily it was a financial move mm -hmm. to separate herself and to protect what she has because he's getting ready to be indigent. And also if they do have a little bit of something, she wants to protect herself from creditors. He has a business. Yeah. Um, he's, he's been accused of heinous crimes. So Shirley would have, only it, it would be a smart move for her to divorce herself from him just in the sense of protecting herself. Now on the streets, everyone knows you've just got a million dollar contract per year. Um, some of his victims might want to sue her. Yeah. The, but the other protection is, is that legally she really may not be married to him, which right. 
you know, surely or isn't, let's just say isn't and may and maybe who knows, because we don't know what paperwork was filed and what wasn't. But if his first marriage to this woman that says that is still intact, if what she's saying is 100 percent true, and I know she provided documents to Chronicle Speaks and all that stuff, and I believe all of Chronicle Speaks, I'm sure she checked everything. But at the end of the day, there, there's been some very like unsophisticated, sophisticated lying going on here. And I wouldn't believe anything unless it's validated by a court. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe anything. And I think she did Chronicle Speaks. I think she did contact the clerk of, clerk of courts in that municipality to verify. So let's just say he really is still married to Edith. And so Edith is the true wife. I mean, Shirley has to reconcile that this is a bad situation. She she decided to hold on to the wrong things. And she has to understand that all of this faith that she has, it doesn't make your faith go away, but you need to channel the like it might not be what you think it's supposed to be. It's it's a very different thing that's going on here. It's not which maybe you weren't supposed to hold on to Ernesto, or maybe you needed to see the man who really was. Now, if she decides to stay with him, she needs to really reconcile the truth about this relationship that you have. You need to stop co-signing and allowing him to convince you to convince him that he's okay. He's not okay. He's a bum. He's a creep. He's a weirdo. He is a convicted felon. Now he's sitting for other charges and he may or may not be proven guilty. But at the end of the day, stop trying to put lipstick on a pig. He's a pig. That's it. If that, if you love that pig, then you love that pig, but stop trying to make us think that he's beef. He's pork. Okay. I think the only way that she would really separate herself from him or, or it's going to really be the, the last straw is the fact that he's not getting out. If he was getting out, even with all this stuff going on, I think he she would take him back with open arms. But if she has no reason to stay with him if he's going to be locked up, for, you know, 20 years or, you know what I mean? And I think that, I think the circumstances will force her to, because she has absolutely nothing to gain by staying with him if he's going to be locked up. I, I, I She nothing. seems like a very prideful woman. I don't know her from a hole in the wall, but she seems to get a lot of energy from having her nose up in the air. Yeah. And she might feel pretty damn good about putting on her Louboutins and getting in her Rolls Royce and driving over to the prison, wherever he, if he's in Kentucky or damn Iowa, you know what I mean? She might want to go visit him. Who knows? I mean, I'm not, I don't know that she's going to want to go out and date anymore. I would not, be mad at her if she had trust issues moving oh, forward. Yeah. She she loved him. So yeah. it's quite possible she'll get her mink coat, put on her good shoes and go see him at the prison. Who knows? Well, now that it's out, she doesn't have to hot duck anymore and hide because I thought because clearly she hasn't been to visit him ever at all. I mean, you can't fire me from my job because my husband is in prison. Well, you can't do that. She did if she, unless she drove a getaway car, unless she participated, unless she's brought up on some sort of charge that puts her in violation of code of conduct or, mm -hmm. um, you know, morals and ethics clauses in her contract, they can't fire her because her mate, you know how many people have a spouse who's done something that has nothing I to do with them? But listen, I think there is an implied morals and ethics clause when her she has a whole segment for years called the Strawberry Letter, and she and no, I I agree. She book, she, she, well, I think she, she didn't write a book; she had a ghostwriter, right? I'm sure she even wrote a book, and it's like so. There is a there is a presumed, you know, sense of authenticity from us, the listeners, with regard to that. Is she still doing that? By the way, I stopped mm -hmm. listening. She's still doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, it's on the. If you go on Facebook, Steve. So let's talk about that real quick, guys. If anyone wants to call in, you can. But um, see, stick around. Like, don't don't go anywhere. Um, if someone else calls in, then we'll drop. But um, otherwise, I'm happy to have you uh chit chat with me. Um, you know, like you said, there maybe there could be an implied kind of 
you know, credibility, right? Um, but unless it's in black and white, unless she is contractually stipulated to be that bitch, like everyone's <laughs> not perfect. You know what I mean? Sometimes, sometimes we screw up. So, I you know, and she could say her screw up really wasn't her fault. Like it's her screw up. Cause maybe she should have done her due diligence with this man. But, um, you know, Shirley, let me tell you something. I think Shirley is more superficial than we it, we ever imagined because, and, and I mean that on every level, the lady has no depth when she's quoting scripture and, 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 you know, saying this and that about the Lord, it's totally superficial because nothing in her actions, um, you know, sort of validate that. The second thing is everything is about material. I was looking at a, um, material things. I was looking at a t-shirt she had on the other day and something about, I know everybody saw this, choose the black pair of shoes or something. And, yeah. 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 And it's like, this woman is just really into her shit. I mean, it's, like if something cool. goes bad, pick the, I have it on a, uh, let me see where it is. Um, hold on one sec. Someone put like three points into the chat and I'm like, sis went to the point of putting up three points. We're going to talk about it. Okay. Um, where is that picture? Um, I know what you're talking about because I I have it on a one of my thumbnails. Yeah. But um, when you look, when you look at that behavior collectively, you know she, she most of the time she's talking about her stuff, and you know what I mean. They have more in common, like you say, she's with the shits. Okay, she they have more in common than um, I. Think. She's she's her she's his straight man. You know how they have like. A comment, you know, you have a, a comedian and uh one person is the silly person and one person is like the the actual yes. um like the the voice yes. of reason, just like she yes. is for Steve. Mm -hmm. She's his voice of reason. Um, I don't know if it's like coming from a big city, like she's from New York, or you know, I know she's from Chicago or whatever. Like the on the call with the friend who's passing away, I guess that was um, yesterday's call from phone calls um, from prison. And she said that her friend's husband was passing away. He's got the tumors, da, 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 da. Um, his family was from the Black Mafia of Cleveland. And Steve, yes. Steve probably knows who they are. Uh huh. Why would you even say that? Because that you, you know why that goes back into that whole you know, image and, and, and I, and I, and I hang with the who's who, even if they're criminals, but the fact that she said that, so I heard that and she said it like it was nothing. That wasn't the woman who said, Oh, Joe, I don't know anything about Joe. I was See, that's the kind of thing yeah. that yeah. the implied, not even, um, code of ethics, but just the, just the, um, just conduct. Right. And, no, no, this was not a public conversation and no, you didn't intend for this to be public, but why are I'm like, we're not see that's, that's why I didn't have a problem with Marjorie distancing herself from the help or the coworkers, because if they're not your friends, they're not your friends. These are your husband's workers. And that's why in a work environment, it really is important to keep your distance socially. Um, you know, if there's social events, fine, but people at work are not your friend and really you shouldn't make a habit of it mm -hmm. because knowing so much about your boss like that has you pillow talking with your husband. And when your husband's in jail and you're on recorded lines, you got people now talking on a Thursday night on the internet about how your, your, your employee associated with you with the black mafia in, in Cleveland. <laughs> like it's weird. And, he, and Steve's not going like, to, Steve's what, not going to be happy about that. What was the significance of even mentioning that? It, it's, 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 well, you know what I mean? it's like, it's like, I mean, dry. I think, well, either Steve used to be or knows goons, um, or she uses Steve to, you know, gr you know, check mark everything. So if, if it's mm -hmm. it's this message has been certified by Steve Harvey, or this message has been approved by, I don't know. I don't know if she feels like he can his him sign. You know, not signing off, but her saying, "Oh, and Steve knows about that." 
would make Ernesto believe it more or think like, oh shit, really, Steve? Because they sit over there and secretly worship Steve and Mar and Marjorie? I don't know. But it was really weird. Like to me, as a boss, who's really, obviously he's not your friend. You're not staying in their empty Atlanta house. Like you're basically homeless at this moment and you're not staying at Steve's. And Steve's telling you to get out of other people's homes. Why are you running Steve's name so much? Why are you, why is, what's his name running Gary's name so much? Like, why do y'all gossip so much? That's what I want to know. Why do they gossip oh, so much? Her, I mean, remember it's her connection to Steve that was basically, you know, the, the calling card for her and what made her attractive to him. So maybe she's just constantly dangling that carrot. So wait, let's, let's address these uh, comments real quick. So Diamond says... Why does Shirley take so many photos of her tongue sticking out? I, I, what she's do you think? That. What do you she's think? Too for that. She's too old for that. She's too old. Why for do that. you think she does it though? That was the question. I, I think that she, I think that girl, I don't know, but now I don't know. If I, I you don't think know. she thinks she's cute. You think she's trying to be sexy? What do you think? That's the thing. That's the thing. You know, that's just, it's like how, how, how people, you know, they perch their lips, you know, okay. it's just the thing. And I, you know, she just prides herself on being you know, being up on it, I guess. I don't know, but she's too old. She needs to stop. Well, you know what? I, what I'm going to say is on that birthday video on Ernesto's um, Instagram, mm -hmm. she surely has a long tongue and she stuck her tongue out to lick on that cupcake. And Ernesto looked like he was about to, he was in a whole nother world. N Ernesto was oh, like, really? damn, I, find that. I showed you guys yet the other day. Where were you? Where were you? I showed it the other day. He, she was licking on that cupcake, and I was like, "Surely." I know the video. I just never paid attention to the to the cupcake lick. Oh I my goodness! Like okay, that. hold. Let me. I got it actually right here. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Uh, okay, let's let me let's get through sis's questions because other people might have questions too, guys. Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Hold. Let me let me do this really quick because this works really well. Um, let me. Do I have it on here? Okay. I'm going to open a and a Okay. If you have questions you want for me or C uh, to answer, please drop them right here. Oh, man. Drop them in here. That way I can run through all of these questions. Um, I think you should be able to see it. One second. Okay, it should say on top of your thing, drop questions here. Do you guys see that? Let me move this pin. I've got the call in pinned, but I'm gonna un I'm gonna take the pin down so maybe you can see. Do you guys see in the chat where it says drop questions here? I don't see it. Uh, where's my? Did I bring a phone in here? I don't even have my phone. Oh my god. Okay. I don't have a phone right now. Oh, I think I left it in the kitchen. Um, okay. Okay. Brooke sees it. Brooke. Let me see. Brooklyn, um, sees it. Brooklyn, can you drop like a comment in the chat to tell people how to see that? Um, but if you drop something in it, it's going to give me a cue of questions. Um, so Diamond asked another question. Where was Shirley living before she met Nesto? Why did she say she can't move into her own place until he gets out? She's extremely sickening with the damsel in distress. So where was she living before she met Nesto? Maybe she could have been still in Chicago. Um, no, I she think could she have still been in LA. I think she was in LA. Well, I was going to say she has a house. She had the house in LA, but uh -huh. they were also a lot in Chicago, weren't they? Yes, the show had moved to Chicago. Well, the show had moved to Chicago. So she well, could have had an apartment. I mean, there. I think she was a little bit everywhere. I mean, I, I don't know. It could have been between Chicago and L.A. I definitely don't think it was Atlanta yet. Um, even though they had the hoodies, I don't think they were living there. I think it was either Chicago and um, she had that house in L.A. Um mm -hmm. And why does she say she can't move into her own place? I think she didn't want to move initially because she wanted to know where he couldn't live. Because initially, 
Well, not even initially. First, they said he couldn't live in Fulton County. Then they said he couldn't leave Fulton County. So it was like, okay, which one is it? So I think that was kind of an issue. Um, that's why she was apologizing to Steve. Okay. Um, so number three, I'm at the point where I'm convinced that Shirley speaks, Shirley speaks articulate and that she has a healthy vocabulary, but she's really not intelligent. I, right. yeah, I think she's, she's, she's lacking. Yeah, yeah. She's lacking in common sense. Um, okay. Renee dropped a comment and it says, do you think Shirley knew about the house next door? <sighs> so they were living at another house, right? Um, they were living, they had another address. So that house was leased, what, like in March? You got to go back to Pam's video when the, um, or, or Sylvia, when they read the complaint. I don't have a copy of that complaint. Um, so I can't read it to you guys. I would love to. Um, but you have to go to that complaint where it talks about when the landlord, um, wasn't getting their rent and when they'd signed the lease, the lease was signed. It had only been a couple of months, maybe it was three, four months had gone by. So I don't know if they rented that house in preparation to move to that house because they were getting ready to get evicted and and leave that other house i'm not really sure um but they were living at a whole nother house pam went through all of that and showed some pictures of a quite a beautiful home that they were living in and i think they got evicted in from it for non-payment uh -huh. meanwhile they weren't paying 980 pine grove and then they had all those cars parked out there um, Erica living next door. I don't know if that was even a factor if her and Shirley, if he and Shirley weren't even really quite living there yet. I don't know. I mean, I did put up a short and it's on my channel where I was asking Shirley, did you actually ever live at Pine Grove? Cause we don't know. I mean, she had by all accounts, another address. And when you look at the pictures of them at home, blowing out birthday candles and all of the things. Um, they were not at, if, if Pine Grove looks the way it does in the pictures on Zillow, if it still looks like that, that's not that kitchen. I'll just say that. Um, I think I have the address to the other house where they were living. Um, I can look it up on Zillow. I don't know if they've taken all the pictures off the MLS. If, if, if that is kind of a matchup to the kitchen or not, but, um, I don't know if she knew about Erica King, but I know that her and Erica King have crossed paths. Um, There's, you know, there, there just seems to be so much that she's just like a deer in the headlights about. She could have known. I mean, you know, you can't fathom it and, and I can't fathom it. No, I'm not, I, I'm not saying. Another day at the office for sure. I just don't, I just don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, like, right, right. I'm saying it, I wouldn't be surprised if she did. I mean, nothing, truly. Truly, nothing surprises me anymore. Well, no more ridiculous. Did she know Erica was next door? We don't. Can well, you guys see that I bubbled up this question? Hmm? Could, do, can you guys see that I bubbled up this question? Do you think Shirley knew? Because they've. it looks like they added some new functionality. It's like, go, go YouTube, added some new little bells and whistles. So I'm doing something I hadn't, um, I hadn't bubbled up like this before. Can you guys see that I bubbled a question up? Not on the screen stream yard, but on uh, from the Q&A. Yes. Okay, you can see it. Okay, good. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, let me, let's, so I think she, her and Erica King crossed paths before. Did she know that Erica King lived in the house next door to the, let's ask it like this, Renee, and um, see, let me know what you think. Did Sure. Was Shirley aware that Erica King lived next door to the house that was leased with her daughter Sheridan's name on it? How about that? The house that Sheridan's yeah. name was on the lease. Where Erica King lived. Whether she lived there or not. Did you know that the house where they allegedly forged your daughter's signature and signed her name on a lease with you and Ernesto, did you know that that house was next door to Erica King? That's what I would like to know. I don't, sure. personally, I, you know, yeah. 
she reminds me of one of those wives that as long as she can shop, whatever, you know what I mean? No, th really, really think about what I'm saying. As long as she can shop, as long as she, but most of those women have a man, you know, that actually can afford their lifestyle and they, mm -hmm. and they have a black card and they just do whatever. But mm -hmm. she, Shirley seems that as long as she could shop, and, and drive around in different automobiles and coaches and, you know, what have you, she was fine because it, it fueled that material part of her. And that is what's important. And if you think about their conversation, there's never any emotion. I mean, they talk to each other so formal. I'm thinking it's like they know we're listening because it's like you, you're not you don't think you're on the phone with your with your significant other and he's away and you you guys are speaking to each other like it's a job. Well, well she's speaking to him like it's a job interview. And I, and I mean, in terms of just the tone and the nuance, it's just so it's just so devoid of any chemistry at all. And that's on both ends. And I did hear her say baby the other day. And that was cute. Yeah. But he just seems like he's just saying it back like. I love you. Okay, aren't you going to tell me you love me too? Okay, I love you. You know, I mean, you know, it, it, it. He just seems to he, 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 <laughs> he knows he, he has he. Shirley's when she's shit. like, dear, I bought you do? some, I bought you some underwear and t-shirts. I have all of your things. But she forgot. Remember, she forgot. Ernesto, she, I bought your t. I bought them, but I forgot. I've had them so long for you. <laughs> See, that would scare me. I mean, what, what you know? That's some deep in the mind. Ernesto. <laughs> So. Oh, it's Nesto. It's Tasha. Tasha says, hi, Nesto. So do you really think it's going to be next week? No, I don't want you to call Dion. I no, no, no. Um, dear, <laughs> I need for you. I want to read you some, some Bible verses. Uh, 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 uh read Psalms. Start with an S. <laughs> <laughs> that damn laugh kills me. Wait, let's get through some more questions. Did Sonia really have a sit down with Nesto? Did Sonia really have a sit down with Nesto, with Nesto's lawyer? Excuse me. I think she did. You think she made it to Atlanta? I feel like she did make it to Atlanta, but I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. I think BC probably BC. First of all, his name is uh, Bamal Chopra. Okay. Um, he. Um, I'll, you want me to pull him? Hold on a second, y'all. Okay, let me pull him up. Hold on, let's do a let's let's do some Bamal Chopra. Who is that? That's his attorney. He's an Indian man. Oh, 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 oh he's oh. yeah. He's gone through about three of them, haven't he? Well, he had Bamal, and then he had the guy. I forget what his name is. Lewis. That guy. Yes, the bumbling attorney. Bumbling, yes, yes. Um. Yes. And, and then a that's woman all I can ever say is the bumbling the, attorney. What, the, the public defender is the woman that he currently has. This is Bamal Chopra. Enter BC to the chat, guys. BC Chopra. Okay, you see that? The law office of BC Chopra. Bamal Chopra. Sir is not playing with him. Sir it looks like he's about getting his coins and he doesn't have time for the likes of Mr. Williams that's calling sure every five him. minutes with Mr. his Williams girlfriend. Sure is, huh? that one, is that the one that Shirley was paying? Yeah, twenty five hundred dollars okay. uh, a week or whatever she was paying. Mm -hmm. That's Bamal Chopra, BC. That's BC. See that? He need to go get Tamar's. Um, <laughs> uh, Tam Jr. Yeah, he need to go get Jr. Jr. Get him off. <laughs> Jr. is not playing. Okay. Oh my god. Or um, what's his name? Um. Uh, what's her face's uh, husband? Uh, Sterling, Michael Sterling, uh, Eva Marcel's uh, soon-to-be ex-husband. Oh, girl, he don't look like he could win a water fight. No, right. that lady, the lady who shot her boyfriend, uh, the domestic violence situation. I mean, she did get a conviction, but Atlanta is on the hooks for not separating them that night. Um, no, what know. is her name? I know any of you in Atlanta know the case I'm talking about. She's a She's a single mommy. Her boy, her and her boyfriend were going at it one night and uh, the police came. They did not separate the couple. More shenanigans ensued. Sis ended up pulling uh, a weapon to defend herself. And um, she was, you know, she's convicted. Um, I can't give you, I'll, I, if you guys want to talk about that, but yeah, Michael Sterling is her attorney okay. um, and she's awaiting uh, an appeal 
on a potential new trial or her appeal trial. Mm -hmm. And she's out on bond, even though she is a convicted felon, I think with the mistakes or just the missteps of Atlanta PD, um, the judge did show her some leniency. She does have an ankle monitor and she is on house arrest. Um, so she's not to go anywhere, uh, but to doctor's appointments, you know, the drill, we've heard them many times, mm -hmm. um, doctor's appointments, lawyers, uh, visits, things of that nature, um, until the new trial, even though she was found guilty, um, she, they put in for an immediate appeal, but yeah, Michael Sterling is, is definitely out here, um, doing some things and showing up on court TV and law and crime. So it, it might be better than, I, I don't know. I'm not going to say Miss Rondon isn't good, but she's just a newbie. Um, this is now I did record a video this afternoon and I have not, obviously I haven't put it up yet, but this, the one he was talking about Patterson, he said that, that ninja, he used a different word. This mm -hmm. is the attorney Patterson, the one who wants to showboat to be on the news. Uh, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jackie Patterson, also known as the Bentley lawyer, oh, owns man. a law firm specializing in criminal defense, personal injury, and police brutality. For him, it's about seeing that justice is served in the legal system. I love making stronger and passionate arguments. I love making stronger and passionate arguments on behalf of my clients. He says, there is nothing more gratifying than correcting a wrong. And it has an everlasting effect on the lives of the people I represent. That is Mr. Jackie Patterson. Okay. He's the Bentley lawyer. Okay. He's like the head of the funeral procession. Doesn't he look like he works with Phaedra? Girl, Willie Watkins, cousin. <laughs> Girl, Mr. Dwight. Okay. Uh, wait, hold on. Let me reset. So we'll go over to his, his webpage. Uh, but look at me sounding like, you know what? It's getting late. That's why I'm like, that's why I, I can know. barely speak. Let me, I want to um, ask you guys real quick and just in the chat, if anyone else, because nobody's talked about this. When so I didn't I don't recall actually seeing uh when Erica was trying to pose as um as his attorney. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I found peculiar is, and I'm thinking, okay, this we've seen Erica, not 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 the not the not the mugshot, but even when she was supposed to be looking good, she looked a little rough, you know, she you know, you know, we saw her. But anyway, she, she goes into the courtroom. I hate, I'm sorry, but with her black ass talking about her name is King Rothschild. And I'm thinking to myself, that's the first thing that made people start raising eyebrows. Girl, why would you go in there saying your last name was Rothschild with your black ass? And you don't even look like you got no money. You know what I mean? I mean, she doesn't even, it's not that it couldn't happen, but she showed and look, it's like sexy red or Shekinah trying to tell somebody their last name is Rothschild. You know, it's like, girl, that was really dumb and y'all were doing way too much. Well, I think she used a different name. So she used a name of Erica an actual Kate Rothschild. No, um, it was Amanda something. She actually oh, tried no, to she... use a lawyer, a name of an child. Yes, but she had committed fraud. I'm sorry, in Rothschild. Yes, right. That's one. Of, Rothschild's one of her aliases. Yeah. But when she went into court trying to uh, represent Ernesto, um, it was like Amanda something. But mm -hmm. when they pulled up the Zoom. Um, basically, one of the attorneys or the judge recognized, like they, they knew who the they thought reason. should be that person. They yeah. were like, that's not her. Mm -hmm. And then when she started kind of fumbling and they asked her again, what was her name? What is your bar number? All of your, all of your information. Stuff just wasn't, stuff wasn't it, the checks weren't checking off. Like what is your bar number? They look it up. It's, it's not, they're not able to validate it. Um, and then she gets off zoom, she comes back and then it says Erica King. And they're like, well, who's Erica King? And she's like, that's my legal assistant or that's my assistant. And that's when it was just kind of like, okay, can you email us your bar number? Cause that number you gave us isn't checking out. And then um, the judge issues a warrant, um, I guess, in the name of Erica King or whatever. They immediately start an investigation because it's a, it's a crime mm -hmm. for her to be uh, posing as a as an actual 
uh, officer of the court. So yeah, it was a mess, but Sonia has it. I shared that video. So that video towards the end of it, she talks about the CP and the depictions of those pictures. And somewhere in the middle of that video, she reads the actual complaint of when that happened with, um, Erica. And it's, it's funny to me. I, I laughed, um, that, that video that I shared, I've shared a couple of times. That video is chock full of so much information that night. Um, like you got, I, it's like, I don't even feel right. Like really repeating all of it because she was sitting there just looking stuff up on the internet mm -hmm. and, uh, found these reports, um, and these statements and, you know, um, arrest reports and things like that, or the original complaints. And I don't have those documents. So if I can get my hands on them, then I can read them to you guys. But mm -hmm. until I get them, I can't even do it justice because there's a lot of detail. That's why I keep referring you guys back to that video. Um, but yeah, that's, that was, that was a mess. Um, let me see if there's any other, uh, there are more questions to get through. Oh um, yeah. Well, I, okay. I was still looking at kid and play on the, on, on, did you want to say more about, uh, so this is Jackie. So Ernesto was talking about an attorney named Jackie Patterson, who was fighting for a case with some police, maybe it was police brutality or police shooting. This is that lawyer he was talking about Jackie Patterson. I'm almost sure that this is the one. Cause I looked up Patterson, well-known Atlanta attorney and it was him all day. This was this was him. And when he he also mentioned, you know, police injury, uh, police brutality firm. Um, this was this was right there. Mm. I was like, this has got to be the one. Ernesto and the lawyer wearing the hat with the red underbrim. Yeah, that's well, gotta be him. Um, okay. Now probably would have been better off with him. The Shirley thing and her licking out her tongue. Let's see if we can. We'll just let this play while we're talking. It's going to come up um, at some point um, towards the end. But yeah, she's showing her ring. Um, okay, let me read this other question. So let's see. So someone said, did Sonia have a sit down with Ernesto's lawyer? I'm not really sure if she did. I'm going to just be honest. I don't know um, about that one. Um, select this question. Did you think Shirley is intimate? What do you think Shirley is intimate with Ness, Nasty Nesto? They operate like a couple that don't touch each other for real. Um, yeah, I do. I think so. I mean, it may not have been, I don't, I don't want to say it had wasn't often, but I don't really know what, you know what I mean? Like, um, well, I well, think so. He had given one of the women a, a, that a, a little package, didn't he? Didn't one of the women catch something from him? The one I, who was walking. Did with her he have a baby with somebody? Well, no, I, I, I no, he had transmitted an STI to one of the women. And it wouldn't surprise me if he's running around with. Really, like, like, obviously he's not protecting himself. And I, I thought about that. Like, I wonder what. Uh, anyway. And gone, girl. Well, you know, they say STDs are rampant in, uh, yes. you know, in senior living facilities and stuff yes. like that. No, they're not. They're not yes. using that. Yes, they, they are. They are rampant. I used to be an administrator. And let me, when I tell you, <laughs> your parents are fucking. <laughs> I mean, why not? I was they, they don't have to... like, Stop that. Stop that. Because they're. Older and I was anyway. That's a whole nother conversation. But yeah, they 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 be they, they getting it in. I I think so too. Um, here's another question. What do you think about the comment from the IG post on the Roswell PD where the lady was questioning the whereabouts of Lakeisha? So I think okay. Here we go. Hold on. This is the licking situation. Are you looking at your screen? I'm looking at it. Oh, I see. Check this out. Wait. Okay, she's a bit much there now. Shirley gets about it. Okay, okay. So I'm don't, looking at him. Don't he's let crazy. don't. Yeah, he's he's looking very happy. Well, my, mm. Shirley's Shirley was doing what it took to get that ring on her finger for him to go all the look at his face. He doesn't feel good about that ring at all, and he shouldn't. <laughs> he shouldn't feel good about that, sir. You got some splaining to do about that ring. That that joker is 
That's that that was a ring now. That was definitely a ring. Mm. The way she was screaming, you would think that she's it's like God, surely. Okay. Um okay, what was that question? What do you think about the comment? Um, the whereabouts Lakeisha. I think that old girl who called old girl and in told California. her everything in California. Um, I think Lakeisha is in California. And I think that old girl is Sonia. And I think Sonia, it was either Sonia or Dominique. And I think they called Lakeisha. Um, I think Sonia called Lakeisha or Dominique. And I think, or Dominique called Lakeisha. Old girl in California, he would never, why would Lamont call Shirley? She's always wifey, Shirley, Mrs. Williams. Well, you know no, what I mean? no, no, wait, wait. Lamont, Lamont. Shirley gets on Lamont's nerves. It's, but Lamont and Lamont has a relationship with Shirley. Like she talks to him and even though he, she does get on his nerves, she, he doesn't call her old girl. It's, he, you never hear him call her old girl. He calls Sonia old girl. But, but he, yeah, he referred to them both as old girls in that conversation. So there's no telling. Well, no, he, he, re, look, he, he refer, said, he old, said girl, old, girl. old girl in California. Right, but that doesn't mean he's talking about Shirley. Right. What, yes. Look, yes. two think... months ago, I mm -hmm. thought that that was Sonia, or I thought that was Sonia calling Shirley. I thought the same okay. thing because yeah. I didn't know the cast of characters, and we didn't know how deep down the rabbit hole this thing was going. Oh, right. <laughs> um, Dominique is now whatever her name is, uh, Alasia Alexander. There's someone named Lakeisha, which could be Lakeisha Williams, his daughter. It could be, you know, Lakeisha's, it could, La, well, Laverte seems to be good with her dad. I'm so just, whatever they I, tell I, I, her about I, her dad, I don't think Laverte would care because I think Laverte knows that her dad's not perfect. So someone calling her dad to tell her that her dad's not perfect, it would be like, uh, I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Laverte seems like she knows that her dad is a mess. Well, friend, I actually just wanted to say the name. I didn't mean that. I know that's the daughter. I just want to, that's what oh, I want. Oh, Laverte. To okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. I, I didn't get I'll it. I'll never have a reason to say that in my, in my Laverte. Life. So I just want to say it. Say it one more time. Laverte. 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 Okay. So I think my, I'm my hunch is, okay, I'm sorry. is that it was because Dominique had a thing for Nesto and obviously Sonia does, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Dominique broke up with her husband. Dominique was asking Dre about Nesto, what he was doing, how was he doing, calling and checking in. Dominique shows up in the police report with her alias. She has been uncovered from Dominique to Alasia Alexander. So obviously she's under some sort of investigation. She could be on a witness list. I don't know. Um, old girl called old girl in California and told her everything. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Is it an affair? Is it about the operation? Is it about cars? Like what is it wow. about? Um, could it be one of the victims called old girl, old girl, like one of the people he took for some money? Um, one of his cons, oh, alleged yeah. cons, mm -hmm. could they have called one of his alleged cons in California? Like, it's, it's, I don't even know. I don't think, what I don't think it is, is because at this point, the DAs have already kept, put the cat out the bag that Ernesto was talking to people. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't need Sonia to tell her anything. And if, um, if Shirley really did have a private investigator, they probably got these calls already and they would have everybody's phone number. So, yeah. She could have called. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm going to also say this. I'm sure as as nosy as these streets are, and I don't know who out here has requested. I know requests have stopped. Like, they're not granting any more requests. But if anyone did get a request filled and they've got numbers, you don't think that someone hasn't tried to call Shirley yet to tell her something? 
Like, even if it's just, hey, um, somebody like who? I'm just saying, you don't think that they're like, out of all the people who could, there could be 20 people out here who have made freedom of information requests and have gotten their series of these calls. Uh huh. You don't think that anyone has not, if people are reaching out to this lady in, in Memphis to see if that's her, that's Sonia, you don't think that anyone has not reached out to um, Shirley? Well, you have to remember though, because Shirley's a public figure, she has a buffer around her that she's not as easy to get to. She's not a celebrity. What do you? Her phone number is on this log. Her phone number. Oh, the phone number. Her ten-digit phone, phone number is on this call log. Let's call it. Are you kidding? I'm not, girl. No, for please. what? I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would never. It's silly, yes, but like, see me, I, 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 would, like, I would never. But Shirley didn't want to be found. Remember, she doesn't want to be out at night. She doesn't want to be, Girl, you know what I mean? She, I, she I, may I, not I, want to, but she is. Oh, gosh. You know, I'm sure. Um, look, I, I don't know that she picked up her phone because, you know, she'll say on there, somebody was calling me and I didn't pick up my phone. Ernesto so and so called and I did not pick up my phone. <laughs> I don't I'm, I'm gonna go in a minute. I don't want to be messy, but I want to ask this question because I don't know what the okay. conclusion was. Did 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 anybody believe that that was Shirley Strawberry that contacted Essie Berry? I don't know. I did did I anyone know. believe that? Is that what you're asking me? Did yeah. anyone believe that? I don't I, know. I, yeah, a I lot of know. people. By, and I'm like, this can't, this can't be possible. Nobody can believe that Shirley would actually do that. And it, it sounded like a, it sounded like a, you know, this AI shit. It's no telling, but it sounded like a bot. But it sounded like sh someone impersonating Shirley. Mm. But the of the conversation, I knew it wasn't Shirley. She just, even she wouldn't do that. Mm. Um, and she was calling her to, to so-called confront her. And when I was looking in the chat. Over 50% of the people believe that was Shirley Strawberry. So wow. that's how I pose the question here. I didn't know if anybody in the chat had um, had heard the conversation or was familiar with it, but uh, they were on the, they were on the on live for about an hour going back and mm. forth. So anyway. Yeah, I don't know anything about, like, I don't know that, the, I don't know if, if you said 50% of the people believed it, then 50% of the people were questioning. I don't know. Lots of strange stuff happens on YouTube. I would say, um, you know, uh, is the video still up? Okay, some people in the chat said, saw it. Um, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure it's on our channel. Mm. I, it, okay. I, it was so ridiculous, I couldn't finish it. Okay. But they were having a serious conversation, and it did sound like Shirley. I just don't believe it was her. Just like I believe that was Shirley in the courtroom. Mm. But I don't believe that was her, you know, because the conference, the conversation calling in. Conversational. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't know anything about it. I'm going to be quite honest. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I got some more questions if you want to. Um, let me see. Do you think Shirley was into, okay. Uh, what do you think about the comment? Okay. We already talked about that one. Um, did... Did Shirley not try to claim bankruptcy in 2018? She did. Actually, it might have even, was it 20? Yeah, it was 2018. She did. Go back to my videos. It was posted like a week ago um, on this channel. And the uh, thumbnail says chapter 13. So yes, mm -hmm. she sure did. Um, now it wasn't discharged. I don't, the bankruptcy wasn't completed it looks like it was uh, dismissed due to some not keeping up with the payment arrangements. Um, how long before Sonia starts interviewing? <laughs> I don't know. That's what Jay Fox is wanting to know. Um, good grief. Good uh, so were all the exotic cars. Okay. Let's bubble that one up. So were all the exotic cars, boats, etc., fraudulently his or, or, fronts how was he able to obtain that stuff i almost i was almost a victim of a of the fake bus sale had i not had common sense and trusted my gut that's good grief great morning um 
Were all of the exotic cars boats fraudulently his or Franz? I can't really answer that. I think that's going to be revealed in the case at some point. Um, there I were a couple of were obtained by fraudulent means. I don't think all. She said we're all. We don't know oh, all, all because okay. obviously yeah. the F three fifty is in Shirley's name. Um, we don't know if everything was obtained fraudulently, but let's say this. Um, I would say probably no to that because there are some cars that were legit, but the money that was used, I don't know. Now, did he use like bad checks? Did he take money from one person and use it in a transaction, wash that money, take it, take that money and go and buy it from another car dealership? I don't know. I think all of that's going to be illustrated in the narrative in the trial. Um, but there were some obvious criminal shenanigans that are being questioned, but I, I don't have all of them. All of the exotic cars, some of them might have belonged to Erica King. Some of them might have been for sale. Um, it's quite possible. And as far as the buses were concerned, he flipped those buses on numerous occasions. He he was almost doing a similar type scheme, um, what has been alleged, a similar type scheme to a Ponzi scheme. So he had several people that he sold these buses to and no one ever got the titles. They never got the information to be able to register or insure these vehicles. Um, that he would get the money and he would never turn over the product. So it's a good thing that if you were looking to buy that you did not buy from him because you probably would have lost your money. So, yeah. You know, so I according to mm -hmm. why he was so public while scamming so many people. I mean, I would think as scamming goes that most scammers would try to keep a low profile but he, I mean, you know, because he has all these stock photos of himself and just constantly wanting to be seen. And I'm thinking, who thinks that way? I would think he would want to function as inconspicuously as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 I don't know. Well, him being out in the public makes it think that, you know, people might think that he's a legitimate businessman. If you're out in the public, people are going to think you're legit. But I think people who fell victim to him, I really think like Joey was it last week or something said, why did these women fall for this? Because he's not suave. He's not sophisticated. He's not a corporate type dude. All you have to do is hear him open his mouth, things like that. And I totally agree. But I think that, you know, he's a good looking man of a certain age. And he also got some of these women in bed, you know, either, you know, some people under some aggressive circumstances, but some people under, you know, circumstances that they may not want to repeat if they're married, they have boyfriends or just knowing that he quote unquote, I'll say it like that was married and they might be ashamed or embarrassed. You know what I mean? So yeah. some people might charge it up to the game. Like, oh, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to tell people. Or if he aggressively forced himself on them or he gave them some sort of something to make them not be able to make a good decision. I mean, no one's claimed to be drugged. I don't think if I miss that. Um, but you never know, like some of these people may have fallen victim because they were just being silly and because of sex and embarrassment, they probably didn't want to come forward or relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, now I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I would think that's a good enough reason. There's plenty of people who don't want to have their name drug around because they don't want people knowing that they even dealt with someone like that, much less slept with them. Right. Right. Like it's just embarrassing. Yeah. And knowing because the one lady um, with the 70,000 and the 90,000 and wrote the checks, that mm -hmm. lady, she knew he was married to Carol once upon a time. Then later, after, um, you know, maybe I guess there'd been a couple of years, she ran into him again, and then he told her he was engaged to Shirley. Now, how did y'all end up at the Green Waters? <laughs> you know, he 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 is an attractive man. Um, 
de probably depending on what what side like what, you depending on. on what you like but, yeah but he's but, he's but, well groomed but, and well dressed and things like and he drives nice cars right. so but, for but, some but people that's thing. plenty just because somebody's attractive doesn't mean you're attracted to them and he's Absolutely. a example of that because if you think about it, think if, if you drive, you're in Atlanta, and you're driving down Peachtree Road. He pulls up on the side of you. You know he's looking decent in a nice car, and you look at until and then he opens his mouth. And to me, it's like okay, yeah, the fact that he has the money and the you know the the glam and he's handsome may be the calling card, but as soon as he opens his mouth, yeah, but you know there's some women out here that that's what that's their that's their jam. They, maybe they're used to talking to men who got mush mouth. Oh, okay. there's some women who don't date Harvard lawyers. Yeah, but at least at least ha have a decent command of the king's English. But they might be like, okay, he's a street dude, but he dresses nice. He's got a Bentley. But but but, but he thinks so <laughs> there's some deal breakers. But so you are you have to take you out of it. Take you out of it. And I know the teacher, the real estate lady, we might think better for them. We might think like, oh, a real estate agent, she's successful and she's got this type of money. She should know better. Well, I've seen some people who are quite successful. I see people on Facebook all the time. Some of these people say they make hundreds of thousands of dollars a month and they can barely formulate a sentence. Like, you know what I mean? Like sometimes your command or your articulation does not necessarily determine your altitude. Yes. In yes terms that's of, but of he says things. Your earning that, potential. Yeah. There's yeah, people out here making big bank and big are dumb, are are not traditionally educated. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, most millionaires don't have a high, aren't college graduates. I mean. You know, I understand that, but when he starts speaking, you see really that he has the intellect to go with with the with the with the speech. Some of these, he might be like, "Hey, young lady, how are you doing?" Like maybe it doesn't come out until he gets comfortable, and he might be one of these guys um, who is trying to be like a good listener. The so man, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't talk too much. Like the man thought that she surely could dial with one digit short of a number. My favorite, when I keep saying this, I know over and over, he thought the book of Psalms started with an S. He no, he, he yep, didn't. Yep, she yep. she reminded him that it's, she told him it started with a P. She didn't, he never said he didn't know how to spell it. She no, told no, him, she, if you exactly, get a Bible, it that. starts with a P. Right. Exactly. Why now, why he didn't that? correct her to tell her, uh okay thanks for i know that um, she, knows, she knows he's an idiot right but my point is is that the, like she's she marries him over and over and over again every day that she gets in and out of the bed with him now obviously not this minute because he's in jail but she has to know that he basically signs contracts with an ex like he's not he probably can't even write I could just see him just marking an X on a paper, okay? <laughs> and she know damn well that he shined a uh, Ford Sheridan's signature. She just doesn't want to deal with it. She just doesn't yeah. want to deal with it. That poor girl. She's mad because Sheridan has her man locked away, okay? And this is all Sheridan's fault. It's all Sheridan's fault. Poor mm -hmm. thing. Forget the no. animals, forget the blood, forget the uh, uh, kids. This is on Sheridan. It's Sheridan's fault. How dare you go downtown? How dare you speak on my man? How dare you get pregnant? The antidote show, I don't think I, did you ever get a chance to email me? Um, you said that you, um, you had some information for us. Did you email me? And if so, what email address did you send it to, sis? Because I was looking and I didn't get a chance to connect with you. Um, let's see. Um, another question. Do we know when the next court date is? Um, we can ask Sylvia. I think they said it. Well, no, I think it was to be determined. Um, but it'll, it'll be posted. I'm sure Sylvia will let us know, um, when she's going to court next. Um, 
Does anyone know how long they were dating before marriage? So I don't know how long they were dating, but the courtship was six months. Yeah. Pardon? Yes. Um, Do you know how long they were dating before they actually got engaged? I thought that they met and were engaged within after six months. So maybe a year. So she's, what was the question? Does anyone know how long they dated, they were dating before marriage? So if they met and got engaged in six months and then they got engaged and married in six months, so let's say a year altogether. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I'm going to, Amber, I really don't know, but I do know that they got engaged on her birthday and married on his within six months. So her birthday was July 28th and his was January 9th. And she, and she didn't recognize the man's voice when he was proposing to her. Wasn't that time. ridiculous? That spoke volumes right there. Well, we Steve know was we're... asking all these questions. Do you, will you love her? Yes. Sir. Will you do that? Da, da, da? Yes. Sir. Yes, a you... okay. Oh my yes. god, he's a mess. He's embarrassing. Really, it's Nesto. <laughs> he's embarrassing. Can you uh, okay. I mean, put yourself in, and re- let's reverse that. And you, you're, you're trying to surprise your husband, and you know, and he's like, "Who is that?" And you have to, you have to tell him this Who is, is that? It's not gonna go well. She didn't recognize his voice. They really didn't know each other. They. You know, I think, I don't know. I'm not going to say I don't believe the engagement, but it's like Shirley, I Shirley was sitting there reading some documents and Uh I'm thinking to myself, didn't anything in you tell you to look up up. and and pay attention to what was going on? Mm -hmm. So I think when she said, when he said, Shirley, that's your man. Oh, it's cool. I'm looking on the screen now and I see the, um, the questions, uh, bubbling up. Um, they talk like they just met. So, um, she was looking down, reading something. She wasn't paying attention. Um, how do you call in? Um, I wanted to be able to find out a little more information from you, but, um, let me see. Okay, let me, I'm going to drop the phone link. So okay. this is what I want to preface. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, sis, I appreciate you calling right. in. So um, we will talk, we'll talk next Thursday, okay? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right, All right you take a good night. Thank you. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, the Antidote Show, please uh, go ahead and call in. You're more than welcome to do so. Um, one thing I just want to preface is I, to my audience, I don't know this caller. I haven't had an opportunity to talk to this person ahead of time. I don't know what they're going to say. I don't know what they're going to assert. And all allegations are just that allegations. So I just want to preface. I don't know this person. I, I, if you would like to email me, everything's on my about page info at real talk Um, if you'd like to call in, you can call in right now. I just want to put out a disclaimer that, We have not had an opportunity to have a chat for me to understand what your association is um, or send me any type of information for me to vet you out. I mean, anyone can come in here and drop anything and that's fine. I just want to be clear that I I don't, I don't know anybody, (laughs) Um, but you're welcome to call in now if you want to, that's fine. Um, I just don't want my audience you know, feeling like I've vetted someone out and I'm, I'm not able to do that. Um, do we know when the next court date was? Does anyone know how long they were dating? They talk like they just met. Okay, guys, I think I went through all of your questions so far. Um, so if you have any questions, go drop it in the drop the questions here. Um, Q and a drop it right in there and then I'll read through them. But all of these questions boom, have been answered. Are there any other questions? If you had a question, you had a comment and I did not read it, um, you can drop it into the Q&A. Otherwise, um, but Antidote Show, I would love to talk to you. I would just love to understand a little bit more. Um, You can reach me either, um, I would say info at realtalkbougie.com or lovelieslacefronts.com. Everything is on my about page. If you click on my about page, everything's there. 
um, you can click on email and my email's right there for you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Fit, fit, la, la. Oh, fit, na, na. <laughs> I'm like fit, la, la. Okay. Um, I heard Sonia had a YouTube channel. Drop the link, sis. You got it? I heard Sonia has a YouTube channel. That wouldn't surprise me. Is she talking about this tea? The only thing that if Sonia is on YouTube that she needs to be talking is about this tea. And if she wants her channel to pop, she might want to call into one of these lives. Um, and that's with anybody who's available who wants to talk to her. Um, let's see. Okay, just one second. Okay, sis, I see you calling from behind stage. Do you mind um, letting me see um, from behind stage? I've got a screen up. I'm not going to show your identity or anything. Can you just let me see that you're a real person and not a porn bomber? <laughs> okay. All right. You can cover back up. Thank you. I appreciate it because I've that's happened to me once and that was I swore to myself that would never happen again. Um, um, okay. 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 Do you have me? Okay. In your do you phone? have me in your phone? I do. Okay. So this is what to do. Um, I put you back backstage. Go into the um, go into YouTube and close out YouTube. And then just have me in StreamYard. That way you're not going to get the double the double talk in your phone. So close out your YouTube. If you still have your YouTube open and you're in the StreamYard app now, shut down your YouTube in your phone. And that should work. Should work. I did that. Okay. Okay. Okay, I think... Oh, okay. Well, I still hear oh, well, me. I still hear me. Well, I'm off. Well, let me make sure that I'm off of YouTube. I'm just in StreamYard. Yeah, I'm just in StreamYard. Okay. All right. So tell okay. us. All right. So tell us. Oh my God. That's. <laughs> oh my God. It's... Can you? Can the audience? Can you? Can, you guys can the hear? audience? Can you guys? Can you guys hear? hear me double? Can you guys hear me double? <laughs> I don't know if they can hear me down. I don't know if they can hear me down. Let's see. Can you hear me? Can in you your hear TV? me in your TV? No, okay, I they're hear saying, you. Okay, they they're saying me. yes, they can hear me. Okay. Um, okay. Do this. Um, close the stream this. yard. Close, close the stream yard. YouTube, close and then, YouTube. And then. Oh, Open oh, your stream yard and then click back on it again. And then click and back on sure it again. And is, just make sure your you're YouTube out is, of, you're out of. So you want me to leave? Live. The YouTube yeah, live. And then you come want back. me to leave? Yeah, yeah leave through, and then come. Yes, it's coming through double. It's coming through double. So you must have me open in in, in one other place. Um, When you hear the playback, you'll hear it. It's It's coming through double. Okay. Okay, sis, call us back. Close out your YouTube app. Um, come back in. Click on the link. Close out YouTube and come just straight back into StreamYard with no StreamYard. Okay. Um, you just mute YouTube on your phone when you call in. There's a sis that says you can keep your YouTube open, but you just mute it. Okay, close out the whole thing. Okay. Whew, guys, don't you guys have to go to work tomorrow? Oh, my God. <laughs> Has everyone hit the like button? We have almost 800, and there's 320 likes. Hopefully, we can get to at least 50%, because we're not at 50%. And we've got someone calling in, and she says that she knows Nesto. She dropped the tea here yesterday that she knew Nesto once upon a time, he tried to sell her um, one of his, get into one of his cons, and sis 
did not, you know, one sis right here said, I'm going to pull her uh, question up. If you guys look at the top of your screen, there's a sis, good grief, great morning, said, um, I was almost a victim of a fake bus sale had I not had common sense and not trusted my gut. The Antidote Show says that she knows Ernesto. I have not been able to validate anything yet, but Sis came through yesterday and has a story to tell so we can listen and, and just be the judge. Um, and if she gives us any information for us to be able to validate, but at the end of the day, it's a story and we'll listen. We will listen, right? You can hear double. Okay, sis, we hung up. By the time you get to this point in the live, you'll know that we already hung up with her. But Antidote Show, give us a call back, sis. Let me drop the link one more time. Uh, don't you find it interesting that Nesto has isolated... Okay, hold on. Okay. All right, I went a little bit out of order, so forgive me. Um, don't you find it interesting that Nesto has isolated Strawberry from everyone except his people who are criminals? Um, absolutely. I sure do. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's what they do. That's what they do. So no, I I don't I don't find it odd because he's doing his work. That's part of his work. Uh, unfortunately, even wealthy people who are savvy get conned, period. Okay. Um, MP said, I heard Sonia is, has a YouTube channel. MP says, Antidote Show, I'll be right with you, sis. Okay. I heard Sonia uh, Jackson Realtor can ver uh, can you verify if that's her? I've seen something about someone with that name in Memphis, Tennessee, and that person says she is she does not know Nesto. Um, we talked about this yesterday or the day before, I think, and they said that it was a little sus and they weren't sure to believe her. But like I've said before, number one, the phone call log with the phone number, it does validate a Sonia to me. Um, when I plugged that number in, it gave a different last name that was not Jackson. That's number one. Number two, that number was a Florida number. Number three, the assistant district attorney, um, antidote shall be right with you. The assistant district attorney Majeski and Taylor reference him having a girlfriend from phone calls, um, that had been played, um, that was in Florida. So I would think that if they are talking to the court at that time, that they wouldn't have just done a reverse phone call. They would have at least double checked to make sure that this, that they validated the information before they talked about it in court and both stated that the person that he was talking to was in Florida and they obviously they knew who it was. So that's why I'm going to say, I don't think that that's her just because um, that information is contrary to what we what we really can, what we do know from some factual information, right? Um, okay. Um, I'll take a look, but I don't think that that's her. I'm just going to be honest. I mean, I think she fits the bill, but I don't know that that's her 100%. So um, yeah, we can check into it, definitely. Okay, Antidote Show, that's you? Yeah. Okay. I think I don't hear me. So I think we're good now. Hey, nice to meet you. Thank you for calling in. Oh, thank you. No problem. So tell us, okay. So first tell me how you found us. How did you find, um, real talk bougie? How did you find this podcast? How did, are, were you following? Obviously you, it sounds like you had some dealings or, you know, Ernesto Williams at some point, um, tell us how you found this podcast and us talking on this topic that made you want to call in to share your story. Well, I have been um, actually a, a friend of mine had um, told me to check it out because she said I wouldn't believe it. And <laughs> so <laughs> so um, because we knew him um, from Smyrna, I had two salons in Smyrna. 
Mm. Yeah, he Wait, was a is your name I... is your name Panay? No, it's not. <laughs> okay, you're not Panay. Okay. Are you no, Panay? I'm no, I'm not Panay. <laughs> okay. But however, um, he I had two salons and my friend, she had a salon as well. Okay. And he worked at some barbershops that I knew. Um, a lot of people who worked in those salons. So I met him when he worked in like the Marietta Smyrna area at a particular barber shop. And um, my friend that told me about him being online and on the news and all that, he had actually finessed her and her son um, with purchasing. They purchased a truck from him at about 20 K and, but he could never produce the title and they had to turn around and sell the truck for about 10 K. So they lost money. Mm-hmm. But, um, before that happened to them, um, he used to come to my salons a lot because um, I worked with the Brother Brothers shows and, mm, okay. I did, uh, you know, I did a lot of stuff. So I knew a lot of barbers and um, he used to come to my salon and we'd talk. And he was he to me. And after hearing all this, he was attracted to women that were doing something that had mm-hmm. something going about themselves. So he would try to finesse. Um, I know me, you know, out of money to help him do certain things in the business. And when he first um, started to do the mobile barbershop, he approached me and asked me that I want to um, go in, in on a mobile barbershop. He had a great idea, and which it was. And the, um, the first one he had was really nice. It was a bus he had made turn, turned over into a salon. It was really nice, but he just didn't, um, he didn't speak well. He was, his integrity wasn't there. So that made me back out because I'm very strategic in who I go into business with. Absolutely. Yeah. His conversation wasn't business. You know, it was more try to get with you, you know, um, inappropriate conversations, you know, when you really don't know someone. So, yeah, I had a lot of dealings with him. It was around, um, let me see, I opened my first salon in 2006, but I knew him before then. So it was in the early 2000s. When, so uh, is he the type to say like, ooh, like just, you know, compliment, oh, you're attractive. How you doing? Do you have a man? Looks like you doing, a, you have a good business here. Was it always some sort of... Um, it, it was it was over the line as far as trying to like invest it, or it was like mixing business. business with pleasure. He was mixing business with pleasure. Okay, so it was never yeah. professional. It was always some sort of trying Shy to too. get in where he could yeah. fit in, mixing yeah, some romance was, and some 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 finance, some romance yeah, and finance. It was, yeah, it was like con artists. I've dealt mm-hmm. with con artists. If I chose to go down that road, I could have been one. So game recognized game, you know, and oh, I, wasn't, no. I wasn't, you know, when I did start listening to the phone calls and did start listening, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised at all because I knew it sooner or later it would catch up with him. And I hadn't heard from him in a, in a quite a long time because I just, um, separated myself because like I said, his integrity wasn't there. So was he um, coming through to your shops when he sent after he was married to Shirley? No, this is before this This is is probably around. Yeah. This is probably around Carol time. Like Mm -hmm. I think he's in the Smyrna area. Okay. Okay. Smyrna Cobb Parkway, South Cobb drive that area. Um, a lot. So a lot of the barbers, like I reached out to barbers that I was f- affiliated with after the fact that I hear this on online. And I was like, hey, you remember Ernesto? And they was like, yeah, that, you know, that Negro, he a con artist, whatever, whatever. But they hadn't even heard, you know, what was going on in the news concerning him. So it was a surprise to them to know that, you know, he had finally, it had finally caught up with him, you know? So. 
so so what's the word on the street then like are you here so when you brought that to some other people that were kind of surprised to hear that are you hearing even more now people like oh my god have you heard about nesto what's going on like is this news in the barber hair salon community cuz i mean pinay was mentioned i guess you know there've been some locals mentioned like the tie at the jewelry store like yes. it's it's there's it there's more... people in the community um of a certain age a certain business set skill set um that would probably know you know even the people from married to medicine they know him i mean maybe right. not well but he was definitely intermingling in the reality world uh, with some of those people so i'm quite sure you know, and then also with it being Shirley too, she's living in the area now that, did you hear her husband got locked up? Well, so, actually, actually, like I said, during the time that I knew him, I knew he was in the county, um, women out of certain things, just mm. the way the conversations went with me and also knowing the situation that went with my other friends. Um, so to reach out to other barbers that knew him they were like, you know, well, finally they, it caught up with him or, you mm. know, kind of that kind of conversation. Like, you know, I never trust that Negro anyway, you know, those wow. kind of conversations. But, you know, just as but after that, I've never had any dealings with him. Actually, I went into another um, salon in a mall here in Georgia not too long ago, and I saw he was another guy because I hadn't talked to him in a long time, you know, and I was like, did you, when you, did you already do a mobile? And he was like, no, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. And then um, when all this came out, I was like, damn it, that was Nesto. That's right. You know, because they all worked at the same barbershop. And because mm -hmm. I did, you know, delete myself from that, you know, relationship, you know, social relationship with him. I, you know, he, I just wiped him from my mind. But then when all these calls came up and everything, and they was like, Nesto, my girlfriend was like, girl, Nesto, like, you remember Nesto? They used to come to the shop. And I was like, oh, that is him, you know? So then everything started to come back. But yeah, he's always, as far as I know, and my experience with him, because I can't speak on anything else, but my experience and what he did um, to my friend, He's always been a con. He's always wow. preyed on women with business that had something going for themselves. And it was always looking at the dollar and how he can get that dollar or he can get part. So if you had a couple of dollar. coins to rub together and maybe even good looking, like even better. He's going to try to talk to you. Absolutely. If you had something going for yourself, you had a name, you know, I had opened two salons in the Smyrna area. So, you know, I was, well known as well as doing um my talk shows and an author and doing some other things you know he just looked at that you know what i'm saying and then also the status of um my family and what they do the millionaires or whatnot he still you know he looked at all those things and took them into perspective to try to con but however i saw through that and deleted myself from his conversation. Yeah. So did you find him to be charming at all? Does he present himself? So the Nesto that you see, like, let's say since he married Shirley in the expensive suits, nice, you know, better, you know, pretty decently groomed, um, nice cars, decent clothes, all of those things. Was he, was he presenting himself in the same manner or did it look like he, he did, kind of upgrade a little bit um maybe had a little bit more access to some more coins or was he always kind of was he always well dressed and well groomed at that time even though you did mention he doesn't speak well things like that i mean what was it well, what was it was he at charming that, at all was he well at that time himself nice at that time you can tell that he was faking it until he made it mm -hmm. um he was putting on a front like he had and he had this and he had that and he was doing this and that. Um, I don't think that his his um, his you know publicity came in until he started the mobile um, barbershop because that was just like one of the uh, first you know in our area and 
you know, dealing with other barbers. No one had that idea to do that at that mm -hmm. time. So mm -hmm. he was looking like he was doing something, but he really didn't even then have two pennies to rub together. Because if I'm not mistaken, um, he had borrowed money from me, from me and it took time for him to get it back. And then after that, I was like, you know, no, because one, you ain't going to take my coins and, and just walk off, and, you know, delete wow. me like it ain't real. You know what I'm saying? So I, I got my money back. But however, after that, his, like I said, his integrity didn't speak well. So I didn't do any more business with him. So was he, were you dating him at all? Like, did you go out with him at all? Were you seeing him? No, um, I didn't, how much money no. did you loan him? No, it wasn't much money, but just the fact that it was any money, if it was $10 and okay. he was to pay it back at a certain time and he didn't, you know, Absolutely. it wasn't much, but however, his, he, his integrity wasn't there. If you, if I was, trust you or I've been in conversation with you as a friend and you ask me for something, I say, yeah, okay, cool. Well, I'll get it back to you such and such. And then you don't. And then it's a delay, you know, and I have to almost harass you to get back my coins. And that's an issue. So right. I'm not going to do any business with him. So then thereafter, he was like, well, I'm opening this mobile um, salon, this mobile barbershop. Would you like to go in with this? And being that I had already had dealings with him with money, I wasn't going to do that. Right. If I can't trust you with $50 a or little, however much, a nickel, and you for you not to do what you say you're going to do. Yes, obviously. That's, yeah, that's, absolutely. that would go without saying so absolutely but he was cry. um he was he was, no i was gonna say that you know he was um like a ladies guy you know what i'm saying because he he carried himself well his um conversation wasn't to par but however you know how he pretty much carried himself like he was handling business and mm -hmm. he was doing the right things you know and because i believe in my black brother you know and to give them a chance to get up to their next level. I have no problem with helping you get to that next level. But when your integrity doesn't speak well of you, I have to wash my hands of it. I'm not, you know, first time, cool. Absolutely. Second, I'm not going to let you have that second time. And that's what it was with him. And then, like I said, the way he did my friend and her son, that wasn't cool either, you know. And what did he do to your friend and her son specifically? Um, so they well, were going to buy a truck from him? No, no, they bought a truck from him and they couldn't get they the title to the truck. Okay. Right. And my that friend, she a was. Common story. Yeah, because this is what he did, um, I believe, on that certain truck. And I'm not for sure, so don't quote me on this, but I believe this is what happened that um he had like a title pond on that truck or whatever that's the reason why he did not have the title to that truck and um once that title pond was paid off of course the title came up but they couldn't get their money back because he wouldn't give them their money back they wound up selling wow. the truck for half of what they purchased it for you see so that wasn't cool Wow. Okay. So the, so you're saying a title pawn. So one of those like title loan places where yeah, you get yeah. like a few thousand dollars for your kit car that's bought and paid for. So we've yeah, heard yeah. him do a, a few times, uh, specifically there was someone in the comments, King Mozzie, who basically um, said he bought a bus from him, a Prevost and he was out fifteen thousand dollars and it was very similar never got the never got the um title. the title and ended up having to take him to civil court um i think he did file charges on him too but this was in 2014 and it was no lay pro process so they didn't prosecute and i guess they pushed it to him like telling him it's a civil matter so go file in civil court but i don't know if he ever you know what the outcome of that trial was but it Probably just seems not. to be that it's a very similar he has a he has a couple of similar traps um and that's kind Absolutely. of seems like that's what he goes with and i believe that it's really a lot more victims that's gone through the same thing but just didn't come forth because of you know embarrassment like you said before or things like that, or just didn't even want to push the envelope because civil court, you know, it takes a minute, 
you know, the time frame of it? And is it sometimes they feel, is it worth it? You know, like right. the headache of it. So, I mean, I got that. But however, it was just bound time for him to, you know, it all to catch up with him, you know, from 20 years ago or so. It was going to catch up eventually just because of his integrity. Now, right. I, I believe if he had kept his integrity with all those people, he wouldn't have as many victims as he has, you know, and then someone would speak well of him and say, oh, you know, he took care of me, though, you know, but you haven't had anyone come forth and say, hey, he took care of me, you know, to speak well on his behalf. Yeah, I don't even know if the people that rented chairs from him, like at his shop, have good stories because it seemed like, um, you know, it seemed like he had some teams, you know, he had like a team of people, but it seemed more show than than uh, anything because it seemed like he was running it like a team, running it very kind of military style. You can see some of the, um, you know, maybe that was just to put on for Instagram. I'm not sure, but it was a little bit strange. Um, and they're having meetings, which I guess you have shop meetings, but it was, you know, um, they're marching, there was dancers, there's all kinds of stuff going on in the shop. It seems like he just wanted to do everything. Did he, did you ever well, know? Well, like, were I you ever that, in any of his shops? I haven't been in any of his shops. I've been in salons that he has worked in. Okay. And I think that was more of a control freak to control people. And he loves that to be in control. And when he saw that he couldn't be in control, you know, then he'll dismiss you or, mm, you know, okay. or you dismiss him. But I think that was more of the situation with me. And I, like I said, I can only speak on me um, and my feel and the spirit that I picked up concerning him. One lack of secure, um, you know, being insecure um, and having trying to establish control. Um, of people and if he can control you and I think that just listening to the calls a lot of these females got turned out you know they mm -hmm. were turned out Shirley ain't she hadn't been with a man in so long so you think he doing a lot of freaky stuff to you and you know got you all turned out and sprung you know you turn over everything you know and that's how some women's mindset is because of des being desperate you know, or to say they have a man or have a man of his so-called caliber because he really didn't have any. But, you know, the front that he put on and, you know, Atlanta is that fake it till you make it um, mm -hmm. kind of state. And that's how most of the men out here are. And that's not all the men, you know, for those in the chat that are from Atlanta and are, you know, real genuine men. But there's a, you know, a real shortage here in Atlanta for real men, you know, you got the whole down low brothers and all those kind of things going on. So you have to be real careful in which whom you talk to. So him being handsome, you know what I'm saying? We can't take that from him. He had to some, he may be handsome, you know, it looked like he got his stuff going on and he's talking a good game, conning you and um, romancing you and his way of doing it. Even if he's, rubbing some pennies together or beating somebody else out of money to, you know, romance you. So right. that's his MO. That's his MO and that's has been his MO. So um, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm not curious surprised. how he got the men though. I'm curious because there's there's a few men that he conned um trying to sell the buses, trying to sell things, and well, they were able to they, you know, he he got some men uh out the out the game too well he has a good talk you know he has a good talk a business talk he's a con artist you mm -hmm. know he, he's been to prison he had time to think about how he gonna do it you know and, and yeah, he, male of women if he in the prison hell he could have been conning them out of their noodles you know? Absolutely. I mean, you know and he may so, have a very specific customer i mean he's he may not necessarily be able to get um, everyone, but he, if he's able to identify someone who thinks who's impressed by him, mm -hmm. then he may have somebody who's like, Oh, wow, you're going to give me an opportunity to buy a bus for $15,000. Wow. You know, and there he's, and he, uh, because even that guy in his comments said, you know, I thought he was a good dude. I thought he was out here doing good things 
out here in the community and I bought a truck, the bus from him and he could never produce. So it's, it seems to be a very consistent con. It seems to be a very consistent story that people tell that he sold them something that he couldn't ever come through on the final sale. He couldn't give up the title. He wouldn't, um, he, he blamed it on Shirley. He blamed it on his son. He blames it on this and that. And then he goes ghost. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, do you know anything else about Nesto? Um, like no, from all I more recent because, right. or this was just kind of a blast from the past and it was like, wow, I can't believe this is happening. Yeah, absolutely. It was a blast from the past and, um, it probably would have gone further had I invested in that in that mobile unit or even worked in his salons. You know, I've been in I've been in the business 33 years, 25 years here in Atlanta. So I know a lot of barbers, a lot of stylists as well as I'm an educator. So I'm familiar with a lot of people and I even recruit for different salons. So <clears throat> um, Ernesto, he just hones in on your weakness. And if he see a weakness and see that, you know, you believe in his game, he's going to play it to the end. Um, that's just how he is. And I mean, it's sad, but it's caught up with him. So I'm not, I'm not surprised. I'm really not surprised by any of it. And even, even the sexual allegations that they have out for him. Um, if you watch the videos, he met at Walmart a lot of times, you know? Yeah. Walmart parking lot. He met there a lot of times, you know, so um, there's some truth to that. Um, I can't believe that a young lady would allow him to treat her as a sex slave and have her doing all the things. She had to be very young and naive. Um, and he just took that, you know, and ran with it, you know. Did you ever, did you know him when he was with Ebony Steele at all? Um, someone in the chat is asking. No, I I didn't know who he was dating or anything because those was not any of my conversations. My conversations were either barbering, um, dealing with the mobile salon, you know, getting a, you know, getting to the next level, you know. Okay. So, his, his so you never really knew anything about his personal life, other yeah, than if he, he was dating, trying to yeah. talk to you a little bit, but he never talked about anything else. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. But even then, like I said. I wasn't believing too much that came out of his mouth because he had already lost integrity with me. So, you know, a lot of things he would say, I would look at it as a lie, like, mm, kind of shake, you know, scratch my head. Like, is this real or, you know, so that's how that went with him. Wow. So, um, what do you think? Um, I guess just watching like everyone else, what do you think about uh, Shirley? Do you think she has come to know that her hus her quote unquote husband is a con, or do you think he's playing the long game with her and she thinks she's different from everybody else that um, that she was never being conned? Because she said in that affidavit she's not a victim. She's never been a victim of his, and if anyone's been told that or or believes that they they've been deceived. So what do you think? Um, is, Shirley, thing I think is Shirley um, aware and uh, just turning a blind eye? I think that love covers a multitude of sin. So you overlook things that you see because you don't want to be alone. I think that um, Shirley was just um, another victim of his, whether she want to see it as one or not. Um, just, just for the simple fact that the um, anniversary of theirs or before birthday and he was out all night and allegedly um, doing sexual immorality things to the young lady in the motorcade at Walmart um, the night before the birthday or whatever anniversary or mm -hmm. whatever that was and um, and her not question you know and then for him to say well she know what I do that she really know what you do you know, you may be telling her, oh, I have clients, you know, we open, you know, we open 24 hours, you know, whatever it is that he played her for and her not one, not being in the streets, having no street sense, no common sense to see between the lines or even question it, you know, then he played her. He knew how to play her like a fiddle. He knew how to play her. But a woman 
as myself, I've been in the streets. I know street game as well as I know business. And I have common sense to see when I'm being conned, you know. So with certain women, he could probably do that too because there is a not, lot of naive old behind women out here, mm-hmm. desperate Absolutely. women out here that he just played it on, you know. And that's the reason why he has so many women victims because he played them, you know. And they probably single, hadn't been with a man in a while. He's showing them all this affection, all this time, giving them time, you know, giving them, you know, the things that women like. And he knows right. how to play that to get in, to get what he wants. And it's all for his own look, you know, it's all for his own gain, not to help or support anyone else. It's all about himself. So I, like I said, I can only speak for me. I saw that. So I didn't fall for it. I didn't fall for the hook. Absolutely. Well, that's good that you did not because, you know, you just, you know, I don't know. I mean, surely it's just like, wow, sis, this is, this has been dragging for you. Um, Well, she needs to wake up. She needs to wake up. Like a lot of other women need to wake up. They did sleep walking like zombies. Like they don't know you know, really what's going on. And it's just because they don't want to see what's really going on. They don't want to believe what's really going on. Now the shit has hit the fan. Now she's now I I promise you she's reminiscing and thinking back like, oh, so that's what that was. Oh, this is what this, you know, so he's been playing. I'm sure there's more Sonya's out here. You know what I'm saying? Sonya just bold enough to be, you know, or, or her number he remembered, you know, because you got to remember mm-hmm. a number in order to call him. Mm-hmm. Right, it ain't she can't call Absolutely. him. So he has right. to so remember she, the number he to call out to her. Yeah, he reached Absolutely. out. Absolutely, because yeah. me and my girlfriend, we were gonna go visit him in Cobb County. You know, we right here in Cobb County. We was like, well, heck, he can get visitors. Let's let's visit. It. You know, and I was like, you know, I ain't gonna wrap it in his face like that. But you know, it's optional. You know, it's no telling how mm-hmm. many visits he's had from past people that. He's okay. done stuff too. He's dropping in. That's just checking out the scene and like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. You know, like Daryl. Daryl dropped by. Right. Right. So let and me ask I'm you sure this. more would want to. So when he was on the bus and he told one of his victims, um, and when she she was concerned he was married, and he said, No, don't worry about it, because my wife knows what kind of guy I am, or she knows who she married. Um, the way I took the way I took that, a couple of things. Absolutely, it could be like the obvious that yes, she she knows me, but you know, don't you think? To me, the first thing I thought of was is that liars lie, right? So we don't know what Shirley knows. Like he's he's just trying to get what he wants from this woman. He's trying to calm her nerves in dealing with a married guy. So he's going to tell her that, like, yeah, don't worry about it. She knows me. Well, and, and, and we don't, we don't you know, know a lot Shirley of Shirley knew. Yeah. We don't, we, Shirley might know him, but, but nobody's giving out free passes. And I mean, maybe Shirley does, but I just think that con men go with the con. And if they're conning you, he's going to tell you what you need to hear. If there, I'm sure some women didn't care he was married. This one, this Absolutely. person did. So he told her what, what she needed to know um, for her to do what she clearly wanted to do because at the end of the day, um, she wanted to be there with him. Now, whether he, if he sexually assaulted her or not, obviously that wasn't what she was there for. So obviously that shouldn't have happened. But at the end of the day, he was trying to give her the information to put her at ease for her to think that it's okay. But no matter what, like a woman opting in to be with a married guy is, is probably one of the dumbest things that you can do. Um, But I just think he was lying. I think he was lying. I think that, I think that a lot of women and I can only speak, like I said, I'm here in Atlanta and I, I do, I do hair. So (laughs) I, I sit, a lot of women sit in my chair and and several of them do talk to married men and know they're married. Um, I have one young lady. She knew he was married, had a whole full-fledged relationship with him. And even the wife knew he had, you know, he was talking to her as well. And she didn't care too much because he was still doing what he had to do at the house. You know, and some people are like that. Some women are like that. Mm-hmm. And, okay. you know, that's the way you want to roll. Roll with it. But that's not my 
That's not what I do, you know. But some women are, they with that. They with that, you know. I know my husband cheating, but, you know, he's still taking care of at home. And as long as he don't put it in my face, it's none of my business. And now it's in her face. So now it becomes her business, you know, even though it's been, okay. it was a business in the first place. But however, you know, if it's unseen, you know. You well, since she has to deal with it at work and when she walks mm -hmm. out the door, yeah, now it's now it's mm -hmm. her business. You made it my business by being mm -hmm. sloppy. Um, so somebody asked in the chat, so he spoke to your friend. So when did he try to talk to your friend versus talk to you? Did he well, talk to you he, first or was he was he just running game all over the place? No, we we all knew him around the same time, but he he um sold the truck to her son, to her son. And mm, got it, her, got it, got it. Her son lost, you know, the money with that. But um, however, and and I'm, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he tried to have conversation with her on a personal level, but she wasn't. She wasn't. Yeah, she wasn't interested. Okay, got and it. She was a, she's a business so, woman. Yeah, no one. So no one. Just to clear that up in the chat, she wasn't talking to him, and he wasn't talking to her friend. He had business with this lady's son. Um, right. He tried to talk to the lady, but she wasn't interested. And he also tried to talk to our caller right now, but she wasn't interested. She loaned him money. Um, I guess kind of, I'm going to just, was it like kind of like a trial or you, he just asked you to borrow some money and you let him borrow it. But because he didn't stick with the terms of the repayment, um, she was done after that. She could tell he was she you basically Absolutely. stated that he was he was with the bullshit so you just right. you i wasn't decided going to see more business with him right. cease any more right. business so it was never anything personal it was just on some you loaned him a, was he supposed to pay you back interest too or was it just kind no, of like a, a personal me back. Loan? no okay, it was just, just a personal loan. Just, yeah it was just pay me back at a certain time and he didn't and it took a minute for him to pay me back and I was just like, I have to chase you down for that little bit. I'm not going to go in business with you. That's just not going to happen. So yeah. and after that, of course, you know, most all ties were cut. We didn't have no more conversation because the con wasn't working. You know, right. it was funny to me that one of the victims loaned him a thousand dollars. And after she loaned him a thousand dollars, that's when he went back in for the kill and got all that extra money. From her, the ninety thousand, the seventy thousand, all that—that that was crazy to me. Like, I don't know if that's why that <laughs> wouldn't be a red flag. I just, I just want to go on the record at this moment for anyone listening and anyone who will listen in the future. Um, you know, don't make a habit out of loaning. You know, I don't know. I just don't think it's a good habit to loan money to people in general. Um, I think it's okay to loan if you have a very specific time period and that's something that you want to do. But if a man is trying to look into your eyes and talk to you and he's also asking you for money or he's talking sideways, don't loan him money. I don't care how much you like him and I don't care how long it's been since someone tried to talk to you. It's it's a it's a scam. It's good. It's a scam. I just don't I think, think it's good to mix business with pleasure. It's just not. Absolutely. absolutely. And I think um, and I'm, I'm just speaking in general, maybe. Um, most of the women that he had come encounter with that he saw was doing business and good business and was successful with their business. And he got that um, little loophole to go in um, sexually <clears throat> and with all the toys they found in the, in the ambulance, let you know, he was a little freaky, you know, doing something, you know, rather it was male or female, you know, mm. he was doing something. So he turned them out. They desperate for one. They turn them out. And then, you know, they turn the whole purse over. If he's talking good, good, good talking at ear, you know, pro making promises that he know he cannot keep. And they're believing like, oh, you know, he really likes me. Oh, you know, because he's attentive. You can tell that he's attentive right. to them, you know, when he talks to them. And he was, he, when he came to by the salons, he would come by often you know, to shoot whatever he was shooting. But like I said, it wasn't working with me. And right. I, and this I, is a guy who's yeah. been married once, twice, three times, four times. Four times a lady. Even right? though he's not legal with it and he's, you know, he's obviously, you know, this is 
a mess. Um, this is a guy who knows um, what women like. Um, men who, you know, men who are successful in marriage, like they know some things about how to treat a lady to be able mm -hmm. to keep a wife because women will walk away. Women don't just like, oh, that's my husband. Like there's pe plenty of people who will walk away from a wife. Um, but the fact that you've got a guy who knows how to open doors, um, maybe cook a little bit, do all the things to keep your wife's affection. If you're out here talking to the average, to an average woman, um, and she may or may not know that you're married, but you've got all of that good home training on how to deal with a wife because you've been married two, three, four times. You might make somebody interested. Like you said, you might make someone open up your purse and be like, oh, what do you need? Oh, I can help you. I mean, look, this is a perfect example. Any of you guys who watch Country Wayne, how many of the women in some of these Country Wayne skits are offering up money to some of these men? And then two skits later, they're they're having sex or kissing or somebody's mm -hmm. their doorbell. I mean, that's I mean, because I my husband watched Country Wayne, but I don't catch the skits sometimes. And I'm like, babe. Do people really believe that people are doing this? But I'm just like, you know what? They might be doing that down there in Atlanta. I don't know. Listen, honey, all around the world, you got women They're doing it. Selling, yeah. Selling they sell for dinner. Mm. You know, and it ain't Papa Do's. I'm talking about McDonald's. Okay. okay. So oh they selling themselves real cheap just because to say they got a man or to yes. he takes them to an event or he name dropping like he really knows or he people. came by he just came through yep come through like you know like a sincere drop through you know like hey i'm hey i was just over this way i thought i'd bring you lunch today or you know mm -hmm. something like that especially when he know you're single he's really gonna shoot a shot you know because he did me you know shoot a shot but it wasn't no it isn't like i said when you lose your integrity and too many lies and you believe in your own lies Come on, man. I, I I talk to too many people to get some receipts to see if it's legit. You know, have mm -hmm. I been scammed? Have I been got before? Yes, I have. So then, of course, I recognize it now. You know what I'm right. saying? Like I said, first you time. Your lesson. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. I, I, so what do you want us to know? So number one, I just want to thank you for coming up. I want to thank our first caller, too. But I want to thank you, too, for stepping up and um identifying you know yourself and and sharing your um encounter with mr nesto um what do you want people to know about like is he a bad like tell us is he really a bad dude does he come off um as he could be a really bad guy if it gets to that do you think he's in uh desperate times cause for desperate measures or is it is that day for him kind of over? Cause he's almost 60 years old too. Like he's, he's kind of an old, old G or old, old G now. Like, what do you, what's your well, take on Nestor? What do you want to leave us with as far well, as I think, uh, I think um, he wants to change his stripes. I think he is who he is. Um, it's not the person because him as a person, I believe is genuine and a really good guy. But however, the spirits that he allowed to work in him, narcissistic, um, controlling, all those are, you know, just forms of witchcraft to um, manipulate you and to brainwash you to think that um, he's someone who he's not. And unless you have a spiritual eye to really see and not um, vulnerable and desperate for someone, you're going to fall for it. Mm. Um, and it, I, I'm sure a lot of women have fallen for it. But I think a lot of women have not fallen for it as well. And um, the reason why I had came forward, because I was I had been listening to you on both of your channels. And I listened to Infamous Sylvia. And I also listened to Pam Esquire. And um, like I said, it's his motive. It's his MO. He's been doing this for a while. He just got caught, you know. And the painting was on the wall for Shirley. I just say that she just didn't want to look at it or just didn't want to face the fact of who he really was because there's no way that you are this close to Christ and he not tell you that something is wrong. You just have not want to believe it, you know, for yourself. So, but I believe 
all three times that he had gone to jail or whatever in the marriage with Shirley, or even the times he went to jail before Shirley, I'm sure she knew something. Now I don't can't say she knew everything, but if she's a woman of the caliber in which she portrays to the public, she has to have known something because one thing for certain and two things for sure, you're not going to be a host, a co-host of a show over strawberry letters and you're giving advice and all those red flags that had popped up in your relationship that you read out loud and gave advice to other people that you didn't see that for yourself. Now, right. Nothing has, nothing has jumped out at you in the past. Something had to have in eight years, in eight (sighs) years, come on in eight years. Now you, he probably made some kind of excuse on why that was that, or made some, Oh, that was just one, a customer, or that may be some customer's wife or, you know, a business partner or, someone who I'm doing business with or whatever, whatever story he may have told her for her to believe it, but still kind of scratching her head. Like, what about the evictions? Like on top of the fact of you're going, you're working every day, you make a decent salary. Your husband might not be hitting on nothing, but at the end of the day, you're making a decent enough salary to cover where you're living. Why are y'all getting, why are y'all not paying your rent? I think that, I think that, I mean, like if I'm single and if I had someone who, who I consider as my husband or someone that close, the the mortgage is on him, you know? So I'm thinking, I agree with you. I agree with you. Like, but where's, so But, but he wasn't paying it. But this is it. I think that it hit her when she started getting hit with those lawsuits of you owe 30, 23,000 or 20, whatever thousand. That's the reason why she sold that house on a short sale and to get out of a lot of that. And I believe that they may have had some kind of pillow talk, like, listen, what, what are we going to do? She in too deep. She was in deep and maybe didn't show up for two or three years after the first, you know, after her first eviction, she probably was in two or three years. I don't know mm. how long she was in before the first eviction happened. And she was like, okay, I'm in too deep deep now what am I going to do you know what I'm saying I love him I don't want to leave him you know or whatever and she went along with it who's to say she wasn't fed up and praying for a way out and she got her way out but it came with humiliation and embarrassment but that's that's okay because sometimes you know we can't we we can't dictate how the blessing is going to come if you're getting it if you're able to get out it you can't you can't question how, how the escape hatch is how given to you. You know what I mean? Um, right, let me ask you this. Do you know the co-conspirator? Did you ever get a chance to meet Erica King? Was she was she uh, uh, out and about around? Do you know who she is? I'm not for sure, but the heavy set picture of her, um, I'm not for sure, but I really think I know her um, by the heavy set picture, not the picture with her real skinny with the red hair and all that. So I had this situation happen during the time I knew him. Um, uh, this lady, young lady came to me and she was going to do some work for me. And she was supposed to have done some work for me, but it never um, surfaced of her doing the work. And she had taken my money and I stayed on her and she was using alias names at that time. And um, it, like a year or so went by and I ran into her and I was like, you know, I ain't forgot you owe me money. You took my money, you know. So that heavy set lady, that picture of the heavy set Erica King mm-hmm. looks just like the lady that I had dealings with around the time that I knew him. To say that was her, I can't say that was her for certain because she went by a different name. Mm. You was know, it, so, uh she has a couple of different names. Yeah, but it wasn't Erica anything. It wasn't an Erica anything. Was it India? Um, I'm not for sure. I can't say for sure. I can't say for sure. But I know it wasn't Erica, but she looked just like that lady as as far as the heavy set lady, you know, in the mug shots that was on the news. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pull I'm it gonna, up. I'm trying to pull it up now real quick. Yeah, the mug shots that were on the news when she was heavy. You know, those two pictures of her 
when she had the red hair, the long red hair, she looks totally different from the heavy set. It almost looked like two different people. Oh my God, it does. Um... Right? So that the the heavy set lady um, looks more like the lady who approached me to do some business, and it never surfaced, and I had paid her to do the business. Okay, so you know? see your, do you see your screen? Right, her. Yeah, her. Mm-hmm. And then what about that? She, that she looks, looks totally like different. totally different. <laughs> Totally different. Look at the facial features and everything. They look totally different. Oops. Wait, hold on. That that does look um, totally different. Hold on. I'm sorry. You see her? You see her? And then put her right beside the lady with the red hair. They look totally different. Why do I keep hitting that back button? Hold, okay, it's this button. Okay. Um, let's try to look at some similarities. Is there anything? So why? Now she See? got beat up. Keep in mind, she got beat up at the jail. There was some yeah. sort of altercation, and also she was suffering from a medical illness. Um, also, you know, you I'm sure you've been to the high school reunion, and there are some people, and it's just like, oh. Oh Absolutely. God. I mean, because I'm one. I, I look totally different than I did when I was in high school. Matter of fact, I look totally different than I did when um, I knew him. You know, I was 330 pounds. I'm <laughs> 220 pounds now. So I look totally different now than I did then. And then also that mugshot picture. We don't know when that mugshot picture was taken. Right, we don't know which one this was. Or you know when, we don't know when the, the mugshot. Recent. Yeah, right. This, that could have been. She could have gotten in trouble before and had a mugshot picture up. Oh, you know? she's been in trouble before. The See, it's, you got to scroll when you look her up on Fulton County. You got to scroll. Right. You know what I mean? so like, and the type is small, so when you're looking, you can hit that scroll and just go right on it. She has a lot on her background. And right. I mean, of right. course, obviously, just because you're arrested doesn't mean you're guilty. But sis has had run-ins with the law. Now, convictions, okay, I don't know. But as far as, you know, most, I, I would say most people don't have all that on a rap sheet of having interactions and arrests and things of that nature with the police. That's that's not common. Um you know, above and beyond some traffic situations and even a certain amount of traffic situations, like it tops off at a, at something. This woman has had many, many, many situations um, with the law. But yeah, to your point, um, I mean, look, when I look at this eye, this eyes, this is the similarity I see in these two, okay? You see how her eye looks a little lazy and her eye kind, her face tilts. This mm -hmm. eye right here, Look at this eye. Look at her with this eye. Her eye tilts. She has a lazy, she has a little bit of a lazy eye up here. And it's okay, this can, one. Can you open that one up? I mean, this picture is not that great, but she okay. has a little bit of a lazy eye and her eye to and her face tilts. Go back um, to that one more time. But even look at their nose. I mean, I think that that's the same person. I something's something's happened to her. Obviously, either some extreme weight loss or some. I don't yeah. know. You know, but, some drugs. I don't I know what's, what's when happened I was there, feeling, but I think the eyes are right. But the anyway, that's similar. the person that looks like the lady who came to my salon. So um, that's who she looked like. The heavy setter. Mm -hmm. more heavy woman opposed to the more thinner woman so maybe in that time because like i said it has been a long time she could have lost that weight she could have you know enhanced her look but back then she looked bummy kind of but you know what i'm saying the business that she was handling she spoke as if she knew her business and that she could do that and as a matter of fact it was um like credit repair Mm. That's exactly it. No, exactly what it was. It was credit repair, and I had what paid her. So much. Yes, was it I had paid her. or was it credit repair? I'm just kidding. It was like no, it was credit repair because she was 
she was um having the um the letters that you write um dismissal letters and all those okay. kind of things right and she had showed me those letters that she was going to send out for me but my credit never changed she never did the work that she was hired to do and i had paid her like five hundred dollars to do mm. that during wow. that time and i like i said i ran across her and i was like you know i forgot you owe me money like you, you know and she acted I don't know as why people didn't. try to owe you some money because one thing that I've learned in this conversation is if somebody owes you money, it sounds like you're gonna get it. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna work hard at getting it. Did I get it from her? No, I did not. I did not. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, okay, you know, I'm gonna have to say well, I did might, not. You because uh, let me flash the screen for you. Roswell County might want to talk to you then, okay. Um, they said if you have any additional information about this case or believe that you have been victimized by Ernest Williams or Erica King, please contact Officer Fields at Enfields at RoswellGov.com or the number is right there on your screen. Um, well, my thing is they're, they're getting what's due them. They couldn't pay me back. Mm -hmm. they, couldn't, they couldn't pay me back what they're about to pay out. You know, vengeance mm -hmm. is kids. You know what I'm saying? The best thing I can do for them is succeed. That's like putting hot okay. coals on their head. So get the get back. They already getting that back. Karma comes around really, really fast. So right. I've already been rewarded. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, the best best revenge is your paper. Okay. Yes, that's absolutely. Yes. Okay. So that that five hundred dollars and you know that she swindled me out of, it's gonna cost her more. And that's anybody, even if he had not paid me back what I had loaned him at that time, it's costing him way more than what he at that time tried to treat cheat me out of. Had he cheated me out of it, it's costing him more. He what eighty eight eight hundred thousand dollar bonds and things like that. That's gonna cost him way more than what he's cheated people out of. His time, his you know, serving time and all the inconvenience that he's in, losing all his businesses, you know, and everything. You know, he just had a way of finessing people. And I, I see now writing bad checks not coming forth with what he said he would do. It's all catching up with him. You know, let me ask you this, looking at Erica's picture, does it look like her wig got snatched off? Do you see these edges and glue residue? Do you think they made her take they her wig her off in jail? Wig. They had her cut that out. She had a sew in. She cut that out. Okay. You they made tell, her cut it you out. You can tell by her braid pattern that she cut that out. And that big, braid braid down. Up, that big braid up the middle was her leave out. Okay, 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 okay. Because yes. that's not a that's not a if you got corn if you're wearing cornrows or your hair braided, that's not a pattern that you normally would see, you know. And then yeah, the her well, time, I mean, I thought that that was what it was, but everybody yeah. was laughing when I said it. I think they thought I was trying to be shady, but I wasn't trying to be shady. I knew she had something on her head because that that yeah, definitely yeah. is giving. I'm I'm a sewing girl too. Um, on top of wearing weaves, but yes, definitely. Um, I, you know, the middle part, the middle braid down, I didn't think of that as being her leave out, but she probably just went ahead and braided down once they took her, her weave out or her, took her wig off. Um, could it could well be, or it could be someone who her... braided her down, but didn't know how to braid. <laughs> didn't okay. know how to do a proper braid down. Absolutely. It could, could be, you know, like I said, it's I've been in the business right 30 here. years. It just looked like some glue or something, but I don't know. I mean, yeah, obviously, her, they're not going to take Her has been taken back. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Her hairline has been taken back, and you can tell that she has some kind of weave or something on her head because it looks as if her scalp, she has dandruff for her. Her, her scalp is bad. You know, you can tell that. You can tell by the discoloration from her natural skin tone to her hairline tone that um, she had something on her head. So, um, wow. So this was posted 52 weeks ago. So this is right at a year. Um, and someone did mention this. There was the comment of the person asking about Lakeisha. Well, I followed the King lady, um, on Instagram. She said that she had graduated from so many university and always flashing expensive stuff. Um, then there was another person that asked that snake where Lakeisha, where is Lakeisha? She, he, to her to he took her to california and left her that's what i'm thinking so to see williams 
Um, listen to this. Ask the little snake, where is Lakeisha? He took her to California and left her. Ask him what do he do? What did he do to her? Or let me in and I will ask him. So old girl called old girl in California. I don't know. And told her everything. I don't know who Lakeisha is, but um, there's just too much out there to think that it was just Shirley. Because I, I think Shirley. I don't think it was Shirley. I don't think it was Shirley. No, I don't think old girl was Shirley. I think old girl was Lakeisha. I think um, um, Dominique may have called old girl Mm -hmm. and was like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Um, Ernesto said or whatever, you know, be quiet. Don't be answering no phones. Don't be uh, talking to people, whatever, whatever, whatever. Because from it looks like he was threatening um, women and they were his sex, um, you know, sex toys or whatever, you know, sex slaves, as they say, allegedly, Um, you know, so it's no telling how much control he had over her. He could have been working her on the streets. He could have been pimping her. There's a lot of things he probably could have been doing to leave her. So she had to know something. She probably was scared for her life to come forward, you know? So, you know, like, hey, old girl, call her. Let her know. Don't say nothing. You, you know, things don't went down or whatever. You know, it's no telling. I, I just believe Dominique may have called old girl. You know, um, I don't think Sonia would have called old girl unless she really knew what was going on with old girl. The Lakeisha girl. You know what I'm saying? That's what I, I mean. I just been reading into that on that tip, but I think that. Um, he did something with Lakeisha, and if whoever left that text talked to them, I'm sure they know the backstory of it, and he don't want that to come out. Mm. Well, that's, it was really nice that's talking what I feel, to you this I evening. Like yeah, there's no, there's more pleasure. to that that's story. Happy. There's, and I I do appreciate you calling in so much. I I appreciate you offering your insight on that. And I mean, definitely stay with us, um, you know, and uh, check back in at some point. I'm sure there will be some more, you know, new developments coming, you know, because it seems like almost every single week we learn something else new. Um, And I think we'll talk about it either tomorrow or Saturday, kind of what we learned this week. And um, definitely, you know, circle back around. Yeah, I'm I'm sure it's a lot more to come out. I mean, I don't even think we've even hit the surface of what really has been going on with him and the schemes and scams that he has been doing. Um, it's just all coming to surface a little bit at a time. And he knows that. That's why he gets through that old stupid laugh and, um, you know, changing subjects and talking out the side of his neck, like, you know, talking in circles and things like that. That's just what he do. You know, that's what he do. He, he tries to talk in a circle, like approaching him for the money that he owed me. It was always a reason why, or it was always an excuse, or he had to do this, or he had to do that. And I'll get back with you or not answering the phone and things like that. So, you know, it didn't take long to see what he was really about. Mm. If he were looking you know, if you had your eyes open to see it, but he could, he could, he, I mean, just look at the victims. He had the, he had the talk to swindle. You know, he had the talk. He had the con talk. He was down on it. I mean, giving, giving props. He was on it. Rather it was right or wrong. He was on his job and what he do, you know, to make a living and to portray that facade that he was wanting everybody to think he was, you know, he was like he was Absolutely. about his business when, Behind the behind the behind the curtains, he really was, and he knew that, and that's what that's what's haunting him right now. Like, wow, how much do they know? He wish he could listen to YouTube. He wish he could <laughs> listen to see how much has unfolded, you know, because he don't know which way to fight. And then also when he just went to court, and he was like, "Well, I'm I'm sick, and you know all this and that." They were saying he was sick. He he probably couldn't stay in jail because he was sick or whatever. That's the whole um, Erica's thing. Erica knew the law. She knew what she can do. You know, I had a a, um, a stepbrother who went to prison for 30 years. And because he was on a CPAP machine, they let him out. Mm. 
You know, so she knew what to do. So he was well, going to try to play the same go. thing. So to, yeah. Right. He, he, he tried, tried to play to that card. That too but, late. He was doing too much. Yeah, he tried to play that part. But he had the wrong judge. He had the wrong judge. Now, if he had a judge that was, um, you know, that wasn't paying attention to the facts of the case, because you do, you know, you have some judges, they don't pay attention to the facts. They just want to throw the book anyway. You know what I'm saying? Or some want to show some leniency. Okay, well, no, he's not a flight risk, all this, this, and that, irregardless of the facts that are on the paper. You know, they do that. You, you know, we have cricket everybody. You can't trust man. You know, anything man made or fail, even the man. So you can't trust them, whether they're a judge or not. But he had the right judge that was like, listen, you. I'm sure you had this illness when you was doing this. And then for it to be a female and she got, um, you know, these sex charges on him. She, you know, that kind of hit home like, uh-uh, that could have been my daughter or that could have been me or, you know, you did this too. Who's to say you won't do this again, even if you're out on house arrest and talk to one of your homie girls and got them coming over, one of your little sex slaves and got them coming over. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? So she did the right thing. Um, see it out in court. Let's, you know, put it all out there and let all these people come forward. Because one thing's for certain and two things for sure. Everybody is not telling the same lie. No. Yeah, everybody is pretty consistent with what happened. Like there's a couple of different narratives that are that he's doing and it's pretty consistent. So we can see right. that he's got a couple of things, a couple of cons, a couple of situations that seem to keep coming up. But thank you so much for calling in, sis. I appreciate so it. It's it. getting so late. Um and You're I have I to have be in prayer, so I got you. Yeah, okay, I get up at four thirty for prayer. So I got you. Thank you again for having me on your show. Yes, Have a great one. Absolutely. Night. Thank you. You too. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Guys, we had some good callers tonight. We had, I said five minutes and it, it was like, it was way longer, but that was okay. We had some really great calls and I thank both ladies for coming up. Um, C. Williams, I don't know if she's still with us or C. Wims. Thank you so much. And the Antidote Show. Thank you so much. Sis is um, in the Atlanta area. And she um, had some dealings with Nesto once upon a time. And uh, thank you to the sis for sharing with us. Anyway, guys, it's late. Um, I am going to spend some time in the morning editing the reaction that I did to the video. Um, so you guys probably won't see me live until later tomorrow because I'm going to have to get some rest. Um, I've been staying up late, waking up early, all that kind of stuff, but I will have a reaction for you guys in the morning and I'll run it through as a live and I'll probably be in the chat. I just won't be live because um, I recorded it earlier this afternoon. So anyway, and you might hear, oh, we'll talk about it tonight and we will. We'll we'll talk about it again over here tomorrow or something, tomorrow or Saturday morning, just depending on how the day goes. So anyway, guys, I hope that you guys have a wonderful evening, get some rest. Um, I know it's quite late for some of us and then it's right on time for some of our friends on the West Coast or other parts of the world. Uh, some people might be getting off work right now if you're in uh, our friend Jay who is in Paris or in France and we have other people who are, who are calling it in from all over the globe. Um, they're probably finishing up a work day. So can you believe it? We've already taken people through a work day. So if you are on the replay, make sure to hit the like button. And if you would like to help and contribute and help support this um, channel in a monetary way, you can reach out to me through Cash App, PayPal, um, and, and that's pretty much it. And also watching the videos, hitting the like button, subscribing, make sure your notifications are set. I appreciate it. Also, you can hit up my uh, merch at Love Lies and Lace, Love Lies Lace Fronts .com. And I think that's pretty much it. I am going to do some more Real Talk Bougie specific merch. Um, I've been playing around with some designs. You guys know I do all of my own graphics. I do all of my own artwork. Um, I, I do everything. <laughs> so I'm working on some new designs. And I, I would want to promise like this week, but in the, I would say probably sometime in November, um, within the next two to three weeks, I'll have some stuff up. 
I'm going to try and work on it this weekend. And hopefully you'll like some of the designs. And if you do pick up a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, hat, whatever, leggings, all of the things. And um, you see me in a lot of my pictures. I'm always wearing bougie gang stuff. So it's super cute. And I love it. And if there's anything that you'd love to see, um, let me know. You woke up to y'all. Oh, okay. You just woke up to us. So, oh, it's the morning. Okay. Yeah. So you went through the night and now it's morning. So you've got something to listen to. Okay, guys, you guys take care. Have a good night. And I will see you guys next time.